Here, I am becoming who I want to be. Here, I am looking toward my future. Here, we learn from our failures so that we may soon succeed. Here, we're passionate about learning and trying new things every day. Here, we search for new perspectives and cultures so we can better understand the world. Because at Darlington, we know we're in the most trusted hands. As we discover new passions and learn more about ourselves through academics, athletics, fine arts, and service to our community, we show our versatility as we choose different pathways to our goals. This is our home. We embrace challenges and persevere, even when something seems impossible. We collaborate and create to take our place in the world. We know that together we can make an impact. This is our moment, our time. Graduates today, Darlington forever. They are super knowledgeable about the market in Rome, whether it's home buying, rental homes. They have their finger on the pulse of what's going on. We both sold a house and bought a house, and the transition from both went really smoothly for us. I feel like they've become almost a part of our family, so we're just really appreciative of Hardy and what they've done for us. All their team, uh, put together from maintenance to management to sales. Uh, I can't really say enough about them. I'd highly recommend them to anybody coming to town or living in Rome looking for uh, investment properties or homes to buy. I'd like to wish the Darlington football team a great season. Go Tigers! Go Tigers! At Darlington, we're proud to wear purple and white. Because Tigers strive for greatness. In the classroom and on the field. We know that we can do anything, be anything, achieve anything. We're part of a program that is 100% dedicated to nourishing our minds and our bodies. As teammates, we push each other further than we ever thought we could go. Because every single one of us has something to contribute. We practice hard so that when we compete, we can leave it all out on the field. With each win, we build confidence. With each loss is a lesson. Our coaches teach us more than technique. They prepare us to be good teammates. Friends and people. We face adversity together. And push through to reach our goals. We may struggle. But we will never give up. Because today. Because today. Because today. Because today, tomorrow, forever. We're Darlington Tigers. My name is Ryan Somerville. I am the sales manager for Business Water Solutions. We do water purification coolers as well as ice machines for any size business. We're on campus right now at Darlington School. Super happy to be here. They're one of our biggest customers. I myself played sports here. Our two founders played sports here. It was absolutely our pleasure to be a sponsor for Darlington Athletics. I think one thing that really sets us apart is our water purification. There's 13 stages. The reverse osmosis part of it has been a huge part of our success, along with our 24-hour guarantee for service calls. So when a customer does call us, we're then guaranteed within 24 hours. We were able to provide a touchless water system to make it more COVID-friendly in terms of germs and, and touching the, the water system. One thing I always say is we're not selling a product, we're selling our service. That's what we really push for every single day is to have a customer service experience like they've never had before. At Darlington, we find our confidence in discovering who we are. In the classroom and on stage. The opportunities are endless. Our creativity knows no bounds as we take risks, explore opportunities, and stretch our minds. Together with our teachers, we use what we've learned to create beauty, to tell stories, to inspire. We discover new passions while allowing existing ones to flourish. We know that we can do anything, be anything, achieve anything. We give our time to something greater than ourselves. Whether we're sketching, singing, writing, or acting, we find new ways to express ourselves and share our talents with the world. We know that our ideas and contributions matter, and we take great pride in that. Because today. Because today. Because today. Because today. Because today, tomorrow, 
forever. We're Darlington Tigers. Shop for your next car, truck, or SUV at Riverside Auto Group. Check out RiversideAutoGroup.com today to browse their selection or visit with them in person at Riverside Chevrolet Buick GMC in Rome, Riverside Toyota in Rome, and the all-new Riverside Buick GMC Cadillac in Cartersville. Locally owned and operated by the Wellburn family since 1974, that's Riverside Auto Group. Visit RiversideAutoGroup.com. For Darlington Tigers football on WLAQ AM 1410, 96.9 FM, or online at WLAQ1410.com. Or you may be watching this evening on the Darlington School YouTube stream. However, you're with us, we're just excited to be here for you tonight. Ian, it's time for some Thursday night lights at the lakeside. Indeed, it is, Matt, and I'm pumped up. There's just something about looking out on this field and seeing. The, the white and black unis of the Coosa Eagles here at Chris Hunter Stadium. A local brawl is going to take place. Not exactly as planned because we've moved it up a night thanks to Hurricane Me. But uh, <laughs> but we're going to get it on on a Thursday. And I got to ask you as we get you know started for our first segment here of the pregame, I thought about sending you some text or maybe having some you know funny puns or something like that with your name. But I figured you've been dealing with that all week long. Yeah, it's been nonstop. It really has. I've heard from people that haven't heard from in years so uh they just can't help themselves so i might as well embrace it well ian we'll go easy on you during this Thanks, broadcast because i'm sure you'll probably get, be getting that throughout the night on your phone and whatnot but we're glad you're with us we've got the darlington tigers coming in five and oh playing at home after a long road trip last week over at dade county came up with a 33 to 7 victory over there uh facing the wolverines Cusa comes in they had a tough start to the season ian losing their first couple of games i know they had some turnovers and some penalties and things of that nature they had to work out but since then they've reeled off a few wins in a row they're three and two they've been scoring at a pretty significant clip so this is a team uh coming into t into town here at chris hunter stadium the coosa eagles heading in a positive direction yeah no doubt about it they got uh they got their last two wins in non-region play and then got to start off region play at home with a win over our Murchie. uh those two teams have no love loss for one another it was a uh, a contested game our Murchie fought them well into the fourth quarter but they got the w and they've scored over 30 points in their last three games so uh kusa is definitely rolling they're 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 feeling good coming into this game and you know every team in this region is going to give drawington their very best shot there's no question about that as far as the series is concerned a little bit of history there darlington leads the series 15 and 7 the last time these two teams met well it was all darlington tigers they would win that matchup 49 to 0 back in 2019 however coach atha and coach joey mathis have never went head to head in terms of a, a as a head coaching match so this is the first time these two teams have met since joey mathis took over a few seasons ago over at kusa and again is doing a great job we're going to talk a little bit more in detail about the coaching matchup but joey mathis is a name that is familiar to fans around the area i know he spent some time over at pepperell adairsville different schools uh went to calhoun grew up in that area his dad was bill, bill mathis which a lot of people around this area know him and uh, so he's definitely one of those names in terms of football in this area that people know and Ian, when he was up at Marion County up there in Tennessee, a very successful program. He was the offensive coordinator, and his teams, when he was the coordinator, scored about 40 points a game consistently. Then he took over the helm in 2016, and they played for a state championship. So this is a guy that's been around winning programs for a long time and really knows how to coach a football team. Yeah, no doubt about it. And when he first came to Coosa, you could feel he had the attitude to get the rebuild uh, going. And that is what it was when he took over. It was absolutely a rebuild. He's been trying to get this team uh, to settle into to the way he wants to run his program and I think they're taking steps in that direction. No question about it. Well, we're glad that you've chosen to be with us tonight. we got a great night of football ahead and, of course, different programming situation for us tonight. Uh, luckily, the Braves are off tonight, so we're not going to miss any Braves baseball for you and we'll get the full series of the Braves and Mets coming up and it looks like the weather is being a little bit more cooperative in the Atlanta area and our surrounding area as far as that's concerned. I know at one point the Braves and Mets, there was some talk that they may find a, a neutral venue, yeah. maybe go to Cincinnati or something like that, or perhaps play a double 
header at the end of the season uh, once everything concluded in between the regular season and getting the playoffs going. But I think everybody wanted that series to go as planned. Yeah, yeah. What a big series it'll be. You know, I mean, Braves are going to have to rock and roll if they want to take the lead after last night's turn of events. It looked for a minute like they were going to have a one-game lead, but then those games went sideways, uh, and the Mets won, Braves lost. So they're going to have to take all three if they want to walk away with a lead. That's right. So we will break down our programming real quick before we take our first break. But obviously tonight, Friday Night Lights, we got Darlington and Coosa coming up. Kickoff at 7.30 on WLAQ on the live stream. And then after that, we have moved up since most of the games around the area and a bunch around the state have been moved to Thursday, some even Wednesday in some areas. We've moved the Rome Orthopedic Center High School football scoreboard show as well. So it's going to basically be like a Friday night on a Thursday Thursday night as far as programming is concerned and then we'll shift it over to Braves baseball essentially for the rest of the weekend and bring you all the Braves Mets series so we're excited about all the great programming that we got coming up for you this weekend on WLAQ. No Georgia Tech football? No Georgia Tech football. <laughs> Georgia Tech is going to be playing Pitt at 8 o'clock on Saturday. Braves start at I believe 720 that day so. You're making the right call. <laughs> I think we've made the right call. As a matter of fact we, uh, we, we had to pull away from the Ole Miss broadcast the other day to get to a Braves game on time and i had a couple of messages of people thanking me i hate to say that i probably shouldn't admit that on the air but it's a true story yeah uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to send it back to the studio again we've got darlington tigers hosting the coosa eagles it's homecoming night we're going to send it back to the studio for a three and a half minute break and we come back from the break it's going to be time for our interview with coach eighth i had the opportunity to catch up with him yesterday we'll play that conversation when we come back right here on the darlington football network we'll be back my name is Ryan Sarville. I am the sales manager for Business Water Solutions. We do water purification coolers as well as ice machines for any size business. We're on campus right now at Darlington School. Super happy to be here. They're one of our biggest customers. I myself played sports here. Our two founders played sports here. It was absolutely our pleasure to be a sponsor for Darlington Athletics. I think one thing that really sets us apart is our water purification. There's 13 stages. The reverse osmosis part of it has been a huge part of our success, along with our 24-hour guarantee for service calls. So when a customer does call us, we're within guaranteed within 24 hours. We were able to provide a touchless water system to make it more COVID-friendly in terms of germs and, and touching the, the water system. One thing I always say is we're not selling a product, we're selling our service. That's what we really push for every single day is to have a customer service experience like they've never had before. At Darlington, we're proud to wear purple and white. Because Tigers strive for greatness. In the classroom and on the field. We know that we can do anything, be anything, achieve anything. We're part of a program that is 100% dedicated to nourishing our minds, and our bodies. As teammates, we push each other further than we ever thought we could go. Because every single one of us has something to contribute. We practice hard so that when we compete, we can leave it all out on the field. With each win, we build confidence. With each loss is a lesson. Our coaches teach us more than technique. They prepare us to be good teammates. Friends and people. We face adversity together. And push through to reach our goals. We may struggle but we will never give up. Because today? Because today. Because today? Because today, tomorrow, forever. We're Darlington Tigers. They are super knowledgeable about the market in Rome, whether it's home buying, rental homes, they have their finger on the pulse of what's going on. We both sold a house and bought a house and the transition from both went really smoothly for us. I feel like they've become almost a part of our family. So we're just really appreciative of Hardy and what they've done for us. All their team uh, put together from maintenance to management to sales. Uh, I can't really say enough about them. I'd highly recommend them to anybody coming to town or living in Rome looking for uh, investment properties or homes to buy. I'd like to wish the Darlington football team a great season. Go Tigers! Go, Go Tigers! Tigers!
Welcome back to the pregame, everybody. It is time for our conversation with the coach, Coach Atha here at Darlington. And kind of an adjustment this week, Coach, everything has moved up a day early. So instead of Friday night lights, we get Thursday night lights this week. Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of interesting. You know, I've always enjoyed watching the Thursday night games on, on ESPN. So, you know, a little bit different. There's a buzz. The kids are kind of excited about it. So we, we're going to treat it as a positive. No question about it. First things first, though, let's talk about last week. Speaking of positives, you guys picked up a 33-7 to win over at Dade County. And we mentioned last week that in terms of region play, that's the longest trip you take. And not only that, man, uh, what a good football team you guys picked up a victory on. Again, 33-7. to So give us a few thoughts on last week's game. Well, number one, it was a very physical game, which we, we had talked about it probably would be. Much improved Dade County program. I mean, Coach Poston's done an excellent job up there, and those guys were playing with a lot of confidence coming in. They had beaten several uh, good programs so you know I've made the comment multiple times this week that's probably the closest 33 to 7 win I think I've ever had because you just never felt like you were in complete control and credit to their kids for continuing to play hard and credit to our kids for doing what we had to do to go up there and win in a difficult environment. Well, Coach, our player of the game last week was Jack Good, and we've talked about him throughout the season, how much he improves from week to week. But he just really had a big night. Four touchdown passes, ran one in for a touchdown, and he's one of those guys that he doesn't run the ball a lot, but when his number is called where he's got to run it, he makes good decisions and, and certainly makes the most out of those opportunities. So just a big game for that young man. Yeah, boy, he's he's really blossomed and, and – uh, He's really improved week to week, and he's just a technician, and he doesn't make a lot of mistakes, and and uh, he makes the throws that, that we need him to make, and he runs the offense the way it needs to be run, and uh, so we've just been really, really pleased with him, and we still think that there's room for improvement. So Getting better and better every week, no doubt about it, and of course, we've talked a lot about the offense this year, because you guys have been really explosive, scoring a lot of points. And then you have a night like last week where only gave up seven points. The defense has been really good as well. And that was a really solid, strong performance from your defensive side of the ball. Yeah, there's no doubt. And we have a lot of confidence on the defensive side of the ball. You know, Coach Hunt has always put our kids in great position to be successful. And our kids are bought in. You know, I mean, he, he likes to force the issue and he's not afraid to be aggressive. You know, our kids feed off of that. And so that's certainly been a blessing because they quarterbacks really good was last week. And, and uh, you know, they've scored a lot of points. So that was pleasing for us. And, and we hope we can continue that trend tonight. We touched on this as we opened up our segment. But, you know, obviously one of the big things this week is Hurricane Ian. And certainly thoughts and prayers to everybody that's dealing with that storm firsthand. It's been disruptive in terms of shuffling schedules and things of that nature for a lot of teams around the state. And, of course, all the teams here in the Rome and surrounding area moving, moving their games up a day. So that changes the routine a little bit. So talk about that and how you guys have had to adjust this week. Well, it has been an adjustment. Obviously, when you're playing a day early, you've got to adjust the way that you practice. And one of the things that we're very consistent in our preparation throughout the week when you have to adjust, the other thing I will say is we have confidence in our ability to do that. That's one of the reasons we've always played numerous games out of state. We've had numerous adjustments to travel schedule and so forth. And, and a lot of you know a lot of that's for situations like this where your kids have to be able to adjust and adapt to being in a, a you know if not a different environment physically, a different environment in terms of preparation. So again, Definitely have to handle it, but but we do feel equipped to do that. Coach, let's talk about the matchup this weekend. Of course, you've got Kusa coming in. They're three and two. Had a tough couple of games to start the season, but they've straightened some things out, been scoring a lot of points. And, of course, Joey Mathis, who's been the coach there for a couple of years, he's a familiar name around these parts and had a lot of success at Marion County. So he's got this team moving in the right direction. Yeah, no doubt. Very impressed with what Coach Mathis is doing and has done. They're a program that has shown improvement not only this year but but over the course of a you know since he's been there and you know they are scoring a lot of points they've got explosive players all over the field they've got the the kind of backs that if you miss a fit or a tackle they can put their foot in the ground and go the distance defensively they're big up front they're aggressive on the back end 
So we certainly have to be prepared. They're going to come in and, and play extremely hard because they are playing with confidence right now and have had some big wins. So uh, another big region game and another big region test for us. And coach, this is kind of a non-football question, so to speak, but this is also homecoming weekend here for Darlington. So what sort of festivities are going on this week related to that? That's another thing we've had to adjust, you know, I mean, homecoming's a, it's a big deal here and there'll be a lot of former players coming in and we always talk to our guys about that that's one of the things coach sharp always did men you know you got guys coming to watch you they're going to measure their team against your team and and you want to show them what you're all about we've got some things going on spirit week's always fun to see the kids dress up and the different themes for the day and have a middle school football game what they call the hoko games after that um that was a big deal so Again, you, you, you got activities going on. You expect your kids to handle it, and uh, it's been a fun week. I, I feel like we had this conversation, a similar conversation, a year or two ago. I think you might have had a playoff game on a Saturday or something like that. So, But I know you always say there ain't nothing like a Tiger on a Friday night, but I guess we're going to have to change it to Thursday this week. Huh? Amen. Ain't nothing like a Tiger on Thursday night. Well, Coach, we really appreciate your time. We look forward to the game tonight. And we mentioned earlier that you guys 5-0 and for the season, more importantly 1-0 and in region play, and looking to try to make it 2-0 and tonight. Best of luck to the Tigers. Outstanding. Thank you, Matt. It's always a pleasure. All right, folks, that puts a wrap on our conversation with Coach Atha. You want to stick around because we got region game two of the season coming up from Chris Hunter Stadium. We're glad to bring it to you on WLAQ and also the live Darlington School video stream. We'll be back with more pregame setting the stage for you. Darlington Tigers, Coosa Eagles coming up in a little bit. Stick around.
Welcome back into our pregame, everybody, as we get you set for the Darlington Tigers and Coosa Eagles coming up here. Oh, in about nine minutes and 42 seconds, according to the scoreboard. Matt Davis and Ian Griffin with you tonight. Want to take this opportunity to recognize the video crew for you tonight. And of course, you got Nathan Patterson, who's the head honcho, head honcho or El Guru or whatever we decided we were going to call him earlier. Uh, Dave Corbin is going to be working the crew tonight. Also on cameras, Uta Patterson and Jody. Potts. You got Mike Garrett, the director, and then the gopher tonight is Clara Patterson. And I'm not sure which of the camera folks tonight is working the Tiger Cam, but that's a nice feature, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. A nice new feature that's been introduced here. So uh, no, we know those guys are working hard to bring a great broadcast to you. No question about it. Well, folks, let's talk a little bit. And now, asking you shall receive the Tiger Cam uh, pops up on the screen again here. But uh, we'll go ahead and talk about the matchup a little bit more. Again, Darlington Tigers come in 5-0 and on the season. 1-0 and in region play. Kusa 3-2. and 1-0 and in region play. Playing here tonight at Chris Hunter Stadium. Last game for the Tigers in. Beat Dade County 33 to 7 on the road. Jack Good was 9 of 11 passing, 146 yards, had four touchdowns, ran for a touchdown. Talon Shirey had four receptions for 90 yards, uh, scored a touchdown. Darlington led 26 to 7 at half and then came up with a shutout in the second half and won that game 33 to 7. And as you heard coach point out in in the interview, it felt a lot closer than that, but what a great win for the Tigers on the road. Yeah, no doubt about it, man. Uh Dade County gave them everything they had. Uh, they, uh, the fact that they were only able to muster seven points just speaks to what a, a good defensive effort it was for Darlington. Uh, but a uh, great game for Jack Good. We've, we've said it all year, you know, uh, D-Man Floyd stole the show those first couple of games we called, but you never know, who, know who's going to step up and, and be the key player uh, for, for these Tigers week in, week out. There's just so many guys that can do it. No doubt about it. And then, of course, uh, for the Coosa Eagles so far, Ian, uh, last weekend they defeated Almerchie 33-17 to to open their region schedule. They led 20-10 to at the half and were able to capitalize on turnovers throughout the game. Eagles have won three straight for the first time since 2014. Uh, last year they went 1-9, had a tough year. A uh, year before that they were 4-4, four four, didn't get to play a couple of games because of the COVID season. So um, you're starting to see Coach Mathis and his program take hold there, and they're trying to build off that momentum. So, as you mentioned earlier, they're going to give the Tigers everything uh, that they have to give to this game tonight and, and see what happens. Oh, yeah. I mean, to, to start 0-2 coming off a 1-9 season and, and really they struggle to score once again, it says a lot to me about the makeup of this this Kusa team that they were able to fight back and, and gain control. They had a big win start off against Woodland, uh, and, and they've just been rolling ever since. So they're going to come in and, and, uh, and be ready to, ready to go after it. Now, we'll talk about key players for both teams. We'll start with the Coosa Eagles. Of course, everything runs for their quarterback, Josh Dixon. Also, you got Harrison East. He's a running back, a linebacker, sophomore. Of course, one of the names that you always hear a lot about when you hear about the Coosa Eagles is DJ Hames, but they've got some other guys that they like to go to. Um, you're going to see a heavy dose of the running game. They like to try to get their playmakers out in space. They've got some speed on this team. And then I did notice on film that they like to work the screen game as well. So when they pass the ball, you're going to see a lot of screen passes. Well, you want to, to, to make the screen work, you've got to establish the run. So Darlington will certainly be doing everything they can to shut down this Eagles running game and then make sure that they don't over pursue uh, and, and it's going to be an interesting uh, chess match to watch as this thing unfolds. No doubt about it. Well what we're going to do is we're going to take another break and we come back we're going to run down our keys to the game. As far as the radio broadcast is current concerned tonight we want to thank our sponsors Atrium Health Floyd, Honeymoon Bakery and the icing on the cake player of the game. Last week you heard it was Jack Good, Riverside Auto Group, Avery Drugs, Georgia Northwestern Technical College, Harbin Clinic, Rome Orthopedic Center sponsor of our scoreboard show which we'll have directly after the game tonight where mechanical parker and lundy and la scala so we're going to go ahead and take a break for three and a half minutes we'll come back on wlaq and the live darlington school video stream brought to you by of course northwest georgia media doing a great job as we pointed out with all the camera work and production work on the video let's send it back to the studio for three and a half minutes we'll come back with the captains and also the coin toss on wlaq we'll be back 
Shop for your next car, truck, or SUV at Riverside Auto Group. Check out RiversideAutoGroup.com today to browse their selection or visit with them in person at Riverside Chevrolet Buick GMC in Rome, Riverside Toyota in Rome, and the all-new Riverside Buick GMC Cadillac in Cartersville. Locally owned and operated by the Wellburn family since 1974. That's Riverside Auto Group. Visit RiversideAutoGroup.com. football getting ready to kick off we'll give you the captains and we'll also go ahead and let you know that kusa won the toss they deferred to the second half so we're going to get a look at this darlington offense to start the game the captains tonight for the kusa eagles you've got number 43 jacob hughes number 78 nathaniel fensom and then number 70 ivan yoder for the darlington tigers bowden owens gus gamage also tommy bethel and then cam pettit so that was your captains for tonight and we're going to see the darlington offense to start the game hey man it's uh, it's been a rarity that they've started the game with the ball. So uh, Kusa wants to go out. They want to they set the tone with their defense. So we'll see how this goes. But the Tigers are, are ready to take the field, Matt. It's time to get crunk. Yes, you can look over if, if you're watching the video. And you see right now the Darlington Tiger there is rocking and rolling back and forth. The Tigers make their entrance, being led by Gus Gamage with the American flag. God bless America. It's a great night. It's a perfect night for football. We're glad you're with us right here on WLAQ and also the live stream. And then, of course, the cheerleaders run out with the Tigers flags and then the Tiger Paul at the end there. And, uh, man, it's going to be a great night for football. Thursday Night Lights for you tonight on WLAQ. 
Yeah, Matt, I think this is going to be a good ball game. Excited to see. Haven't seen the Coos Eagles in person in quite some time. So excited. You know, uh, the whole offseason has been us talking about how excited we are to have this realignment happen and bring these local rivalries back together. And tonight we're finally getting to enjoy one. No doubt. And, of course, we're already starting to get score updates. And, of course, this is a game that's, of course, meaningful to the region. But uh, Murchie's jumped on Chattooga early, huh? 13 to nothing and outgained them 148 to 10 Unbelievable. in the first quarter. Wow. So, Almerchi off to a great start playing. I, I, that game's out at Almerchi, I yeah. believe, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. We get to make a trip out there not too far from now. So, uh, lo looking forward to that. Can't believe we're about to turn the page to October. I know. This is game six here for the Norlington Tigers, which is just unbelievable to me. I, I, I cannot believe it. But, uh, yeah, you're right. Coming up this weekend, we're going to have October the 1st coming up on Saturday. And, uh, man, unbelievable. But now the Darlington Tigers are going to get lined up. When man back deep, a couple actually for the Tigers. Lining up at the far hash is going to be Talon Shirey. And then back here on the near hash, working from right to left, is going to be to Marion Floyd. So you got a couple of dangerous customers no back doubt. there to attempt to return this kick for the Tigers. The Coos has got it teed up. We're about ready to rock and roll here from Chris Hunter Stadium. And ladies and gentlemen, toe has met leather. We are underway. A line drive up the middle. It's going to be brought out by Floyd. Fields it at the 10. Cuts up the middle of the field he's got a big return he's out across midfield before they haul him down at the 49 on the kusa side of the field big return and the kick they got the kick off before i could say it but it's like pick your poison are you actually going to kick to either of these guys and and sure enough uh floyd was able to field that on a short hop and take off and he had he had one more man to beat or he would have taken that one to the house but great starting field position for the darlington offense as that ball will sit squarely at the kusa 49 yard line so the Tigers will line up on offense, as you mentioned, with great field position at the 49 on the Eagles side of the field. Jack Good lines him up. He was our honeymoon bakery icing on the cake player of the game last week. Had a big night. He's going to send a couple of wide receivers on each side. He'll have Bowden Owens in the backfield with him. And here come the Tigers on their first offensive possession of the game. Here's the snap. Going to drop back, looking to throw, puts it in the air. Good ball. Talon Shirey catches at the 20-yard line, and he's going to be brought down there. So right there after the first play, Ian, uh, about a 30-yard play, and the Tigers are going to be on the doorstep of the, the red zone. I'll tell you what, Matt, that, those were all just go routes, uh, and, and he was wide open, Talon Shirey. Uh, and good put that one on the money. He has just been more and more accurate each and each week. All right. It's going to be first and 10 from the 21-yard line. Shotgun snap. There it is. Going to hand off to Bowden Owens. Runs around the right side. I don't think anybody's going to get him. And he gets tripped up as he's going into the end zone. Touchdown, Darlington Tigers. A 21-yard run. A big return. Two big plays. They've already hit pay dirt. 6-0, to zero, Darlington Tigers. Well, we wanted to see how they would do with the offense taking the field first and in two plays they marched it 49 yards for a touchdown uh, to take a six nothing lead with the pat pending indeed bowden owens for six and now we get ready for the pat from rylan scott see if he can punch this one through and make it a seven to zero ball game and we've not even played a minute yet 11 22 left to go here in the first quarter and here comes the kick from rylan scott the hole will be handled by sammy Koncheski. And we got a whistle before they snapped the ball. Yeah, we'll see what the call is. Had some issues on the PATs last week, getting the snap down. Uh, ended up going for two a couple of times, but it was uh, it was a difficult uh, process for the Tigers last week, and they're going to get backed up five before they can kick this one. So a 21-yard run for a touchdown. Two plays on that drive, and Darlington's already in the end zone, leading this one 6-0. to zero. And now, as you pointed out, they'll try this one from the 15-yard line. And we get ready for the snap. It's on the way. Hold looks good. Kick is on the way. Plenty of leg. And it is right through the uprights. 7-0, to zero, Tigers. Well, Tigers wasted no time getting on the board. 11-22 remains in the first quarter. And it's 7-0, Darlington, after a great kick return. Let's not forget about that. Marion Floyd uh, fielded it around the 15 and took it all the way to the Coosa 49 on the return setting Darlington up with great field position for their first drive. They took advantage. Jack Good hit uh, Talon Shirey for about 28 yards. And then the next play, 21 yards, Bowden Owens off the right side, uh, took it to the house. No doubt about it. So a very successful start to the game for the Tigers. And now they will kick it away here to the Coosa Eagles. And if you're Joey Mathis and the Eagles, 
Got to answer the bell here. You absolutely do. And that is not an easy task. This Darlington defense has been stingy all season. And they've started fast. Uh, uh, really playing well in the first quarter this year. I, I want to get those numbers. Darlington has outscored their opponents big time in the first quarter this season. No doubt. And it looks like Tommy Bethel is going to kick this one off from the 40 from right to left. The Coosa Eagles and their white uniforms, black letters and numbers, and black pants. They are going to send two men back. You're going to have DJ Hams, very fast senior here for this football team. And also Harley Brock is out there going to try to return this kick. It's going towards Hames and sails into the end zone, an automatic touchback, and that'll bring it out to the 20 yard line. And Thomas Bethel, huh? After splitting the, the kicking duties there for a while, they've just been letting him put it through the back of the end zone these past few weeks. He's done a good job. Yeah, whenever you got a guy that can boot it like that, get in the end zone, make him go 80 yards to pay dirt, that is a serious weapon on your football team. Absolutely. And that is where the Coosa Eagles will start off at their own 20, already down 7-0. to zero, And we've only played 38 seconds of this football game. Going to send a couple of receivers off to the far side. Everybody else is going to be in tight here for this package. There's a snap. Dixon is going to go off to his left, puts it in the air, and that's going to be tipped oh. off the receiver's hand. That's Turner and the complete pass. And one that he wished he had another shot at. He probably should have hauled that oh, one in. No doubt about it. That ball was on the money. Hit him right in the hands. He just couldn't reel it in. Josh Shun Turner, sophomore, was the intended receiver there. But that brings up second down and 10 here for the Coosa Eagles with the ball at the 20-yard line. And uh, interesting to me that they, they moved the pocket there. They're aware that these Darlington Tigers like to go hunting for quarterbacks. No doubt about it. Everybody in tight from the gun. There's the snap. Going to hand it off, go off to the left side, try to find a room, some room to run, and there's nothing there, Ian. He might have got a yard. And that'll put him in third and long. And they will give him a yard here, but an obvious, obvious passing situation. And, Matt, you noted that they like to pop a screen here and there. This is an appropriate time to call one. And I'm sure the Tigers have watched their tape, too. So we'll see uh, We'll see what direction the Eagles decide to go here. DJ Hames, your ball carrier on the previous play, going to send Levain Millsap wide right here for this package. Otherwise, they're going to be in a pistol formation. There's the snap to Dixon. Turns, hands it off. They're going to run the football off the left side to Hames, and he does get two or three yards. But we're going to see Kusa go three and out here on their first possession. And, uh, you know, if you're an Eagle fan, you, you go back to that first down play, would have been about a 14-yard gain. Maybe if he makes a guy miss a little more than that. Uh, but instead, you're behind the chains. Darlington defended the, the run well, and uh, it's Time to kick it away to a very dangerous return man. Talon Shirey has, has made noise many times on the punt return game, and we've seen him take him to the house. We've seen him set them up with great field position. Uh, so dangerous guy. No doubt, and the kick happens with 10 minutes left to go here, and the first quarter goes off the back of the foot of one of the Coosa players, mm -hmm. and yet again, Ian, the Darlington Tigers are going to have excellent field position. Yeah, they started at Coosa's 49 on the first drive. They will start at their own 49 on this drive. So uh, not complaining about the field position so far. And we just got a message from our buddy Rick, and he says, ain't nothing like a Tiger on a Thursday night. That's right, Rick. Good to glad, hear from you, Rick. Glad you tuned in. Or here, I don't know. I haven't seen. I think they're listening to the broadcast okay. tonight. But the Tigers get ready to line up, already leading this one 7-0. to zero, And we've only played two minutes and five seconds here of the first quarter of the football game. They're getting their second possession. There's the snap, working right to left, a handoff to Demarion Floyd. Nobody's going to catch him. Breaks a couple of tackles, squirts out at the end of the play. And he, I think he got 10 yards. Oh, he definitely... Uh -huh. uh, picked up a Parker and Lundy first down. Well, they're going to mark him short about a yard. Really? He bounced off that guy and fell forward, but uh, they're not paying me to do it. So <laughs> so the Tigers will go back to the line of scrimmage with one yard to gain to get that first down. I'm with you. I thought he had it, but they'll line him up at the 42-yard line. Going to send a couple of receivers off to the far side, one to the near. There's the snap, good turns. He's going to run the football. He is following Demarion Floyd, and he's going to be pulled down for a loss of about two, three yards. Good pursuit by the Coosa defense. Harrison East on the tackle there for Coosa. And that kind of looked like a busted play to me. Uh, good try to pull it down and, and 
make the best of it, but instead of third and short, they're now back at third and four. Long three yards on that play. So the ball will be at the 44-yard line. Darlington on the Coosa side of the field, leading this game 7-0. 8.48 remains here in the first quarter of Thursday Night Lights. I think this is the first for me. I don't think I've ever called a high school football game on a Thursday. Man goes in motion. They fake it, give it off to Demarion Foy, cuts back to the near side of the field and gets tripped up at the 40. So that's going to be a fairly short gain, uh, but it's enough to move the sticks. That's right. So he... He didn't get it on the initial run, but that Parker and Lundy first down compliments of D-Man Floyd. So now it'll be a little bit of tempo here from the Tigers, gonna send trips to the far side, moving quick. First and 10, Jack Good rolling to his right, puts it in the air, a good ball, wide open receiver, Braden Bell, he hits him, and he's knocked out of bounds at about the 15 yard line. Another play for this Darlington offense, Ian. I mean Braden Bell was wide open, and that ball was on the money. Uh, the, the route took him to the boundary, so the Coosa player was able to secure him, but pulled to his right, right there and found his man right at the 18-yard line where he went out of bounds. So some personnel change here for the Tigers as they get ready for first down and 10 now in the red zone with the ball at the 16. 15 yard line. There's the snap. Good. Takes it. Hands it off. It's a reverse. They give it off to Eli Thompson. He's headed towards the goal line. Touchdown. Darlington Tigers. A 15 yard run. And that is 13 to 0 in favor of the Tigers. Two possessions, two scores. And man, the Tigers are rolling tonight. They absolutely are. We didn't get to see Eli Thompson last week. He was out uh, with an injury or illness, not sure. Uh, but he's come in and, and made an immediate impact here, taking the reverse untouched for an 18-yard touchdown uh, and another Darlington score. They are off to a hot start. So that drive yielded two first downs and, and yet another touchdown to, to seize the early lead, 13-0. Here comes the extra point attempt. From Ryland Scott, handling the hold again is going to be Sammy Koncheski. Here comes the snap. Hold looks good. Kick on the way, and it is right through the uprights, 14-0. to And Matt, this Darlington scoring celebration is brought to you by La Scala Mediterranean Bistro. For all of life's celebratory moments, La Scala is there to make them special. Call today to book your holiday party or special event. So a great start to the game here for the Darlington Tigers. They get ready to kick it back off here to the Coosa Eagles. Darlington playing at home. They have started the season 5-0, 1-0 in region play. And just off to a fantastic start. And one of the things that we've talked about a lot over the last few weeks is this team has been very explosive on big plays on offense, averaging close to 37 points a game. Coming into this game, they've been so consistent. Yeah, absolutely. And and. The quick starts continue uh, time and time again. They, they just jump all over their opponents early. Uh, and, and Cusa really needs to answer with this drive or this could get away from them quickly. No doubt about it. So we've got Tommy Bethel with the ball teed up at the 40, about to kick it from right to left back to the Cusa Eagles. You're going to have the same gentleman back there for Cusa over on the near hash. Working from left to right is going to be DJ Hames. Also back there is Harley Brock. He'll be on the far side. And here comes the kickoff from Tommy. And this one he's going to corner oh towards about the 30-yard line and it's going to roll out of bounds. I think Floyd recovered that. Did he really? Yeah. yeah I mean, they, they kicked that to open space. And I, we're going to see how they call it, Matt, but... Little conference. I thought he fielded it. I thought he got his hands on the ball before he went out of bounds. If he possessed it with at least one foot in bounds, that's Darlington football. That's that, that's Darlington football, man. Wow. Unbelievable turn of events. Nope. They're nope, going to give it to Kusa. Kusa. Okay. So Kusa's going to have the ball. Evidently, it did go out of bounds, and so therefore – uh, Kusa is going to have the football here and avoid a disaster, a disaster right there. So it's going to be Kusa ball at the 35-yard line on their own side of the field after the kickoff was out of bounds. And that was close. Yes, it was. 
But if you're just tuning in, Darlington leads this one, scoring on their first two possessions, 14 to zero your score. We've got 8.07 left to go here in our first quarter. High school football night on Thursday on WLAQ. We'll have the Honeymoon Bakery icing on the cake player of the game coming up after tonight's action. Rome Orthopedics Center High School football scoreboard show with Lynn and Austin, and they're going to have special guest Clay with them. So the Coos Eagles will line up with everybody in tight except for their quarterback. He's in the gun. They're going to hand off. Nope, going to go up the middle with it this time, and there's nothing there. He's going to take a loss. I So that's going to be a loss of about four or five yards. It looks like five, Ian. Yeah, I know I saw Gus Gammage back Chandler in on that tackle. Swarming Darlington defense. Man. So the ball's at the 32-yard line. Kusa with the football working from left to right. 7.38 in the clock ticking here in the first quarter. They're going to send a wide receiver to the near side. That's going to be Millsap. Otherwise, everybody's in tight. Here comes the snap to Dixon. He's going to roll out looking to throw, and he gets it to a wide receiver. Good catch by Turner. He cuts inside and is going to be brought down at the 40. So a positive play there for the Coosa Eagles. Yeah, rolling out the quarterback. He found Turner open out in the flat, and he was able to make one guy miss and make this third and manageable. So a pass to Turner sets up a third down and seven here for the Eagles. We're down to the seven-minute mark. So the Eagles will come back to the line of scrimmage after a play call is taken in by Josh Dixon from the sidelines, their quarterback. Going to have Braves baseball for you all weekend on WLAQ. Wide receiver off to the far side. This time it's going to be Millsap, a freshman. Play clock's getting away from him. And here comes the snap to Dixon, and I don't think he got it in time. He did not. They didn't break the huddle, and there was eight, eight seconds left on the play clock when they broke the huddle. And that one's, that one's gonna cost them five yards. So a third and seven situation is now all of a sudden gonna be third and 12 here for the Coosa Eagles. And things have not gone well for them so far in this football game. Well, you just had some unforced errors, uh, really. And then defensively, Darlington hasn't had any problems moving the ball. So, the Eagles will go to the huddle and get ready for their third down and 12 coming up with the ball now on the 33-yard line. Josh Dixon, their quarterback, in the gun. He's going to have a couple of wide receivers, one on each side. Man goes in motion, dropping back is Dixon. He'll put it in the air. A screen pass. Was he able to connect? I'm not sure if he caught it. If he did, he was tackled immediately. Dawson yeah. sniffed that out, a little middle screen that they tried to set up, and the Tigers were ready. And it'll be... Uh, It'll be fourth down. Indeed. So you're going to see Kusa have to punt three and out their first two drives of this football game. And I'm trying to catch that young man's number. That's the punter for them. But back for the Tigers standing at the near hash at the 35-yard line is going to be Talon Shirey. Low snap, picked up, kick is away. It is from their kicker, Gio Oriana. And the ball is going to roll out of bounds at about the 46-yard line. So you're going to have Darlington with the ball in Coosa territory to start this drive also. Yeah, and that one was either partially blocked or just shanked due to the pressure. Uh, so once again, Darlington starts in great field position for their third possession. As a matter of fact, this is going to be, believe it or not, their best field position of the game, and it's been good all three drives. Sure has. This one will be at the 48-yard yeah. line of Coosa. Second Second best uh, field position tonight was at the 49 on Coosa's side of the field. And their worst was at their own 49. That's right. Yeah, you'll take that. So they'll line up in the gun. Tigers working right to left, leading at 14 to 0. They got the ball for the third time this game. Dropping back is good. going to swing it out to the right side to Bowden Owens. He will find a little room on the edge and picks up about five or six yards. Look at him keep those wheels turning. He would yeah. not be brought down and got maybe another yard or two. Yards after contact. Coaches yeah, I just love that. I think that was the third or fourth option in, for Jack Good in that progression, but he was wide open out there uh, on the swing pattern and, and picked up what he could. Seven tough yards. So this is going to bring up second down and three here for the Tigers with the ball on the Kusa 41. They're going to fake the pass, play action. Quarterback's going to put it in the air. They're going for the big one. Slade Clevenger open! And it's bobbled and dropped right at the goal line. Incomplete pass. 
Of course, a defender got in there in between him and the ball a little bit, but uh, but it's incomplete. Yeah, that, was that would a, have been a home run ball. That's a double play action fake there as he faked the draw and then reverse. And the ball, I think the ball just kind of slipped out of his hands just a little bit and hung up on him. Clevenger tried to come back to it and make the play, but could not hold on. So this brings up third down and three here for the Tigers with the ball at the Coosa 41, already, already leading this one 14 to zero with 541 left to go here in the first quarter as Jack Good runs to the line of scrimmage, gives the play call. And it looks like we're gonna have a timeout. So we're gonna take one also. We're glad you're with us tonight on WLAQ and the live video stream from Darlington School. Darlington up 14-0. We've got third down and three coming up after a one minute timeout. We'll be back. At Darlington, we find our confidence in discovering who we are. In the classroom and on stage. The opportunities are endless. Our creativity knows no bounds as we take risks, explore opportunities, and stretch our minds. Together with our teachers, we use what we've learned to create beauty, to tell stories, to inspire. We discover new passions while allowing existing ones to flourish. We know that we can do anything, be anything, achieve anything. We give our time to something greater than ourselves, whether we're sketching, singing, writing, or acting, we find new ways to express ourselves and share our talents with the world. We know that our ideas and contributions matter, and we take great pride in that. Because today, because today, because today, because today, Snap on third down. They're going to run it off to the right side, but a whistle is blown, and they're going to bring this one back in. Yeah, I don't see a flag. I didn't see it either. I heard the whistle and they stopped the play. Maybe there were, I don't know, I, don't, I guess the ball wasn't ready to be snapped. The officials had not blown it live, but I guess we'll find out here. We'll run it back, th third and three. So the Tigers will get ready to run this play again. Third down and three, ball at the 41-yard line on Coosa's side of the field. The drive started at the Coosa 48-yard line. Going to send a couple of wide receivers to the near side. A couple will be to the far side. Good with Owens in the backfield. Takes a snap. Fires it right. Connects with his wide receiver. He's going to be brought down at about the 31-yard line. Was that Slade Clevenger? Ashton Albers. Ball? Nope. Ashton Albers. Yep. yep. Just a little wide receiver screen there. And Albers cut it up and picked up enough yardage for a Parker and Lundy first down. So a pass to Ashton Albers moves the chains. And now the Tigers are going to line up at the 32-yard line on the Coosa Eagles side of the field as they get ready for this first and 10. Going to send three wide receivers to the near side. Line up in the slot here for the Tigers is going to be Eli Thompson. There's the snap. Going to hand it off, run it up to the near side. Bowen Owens is going to be dragged down, and they get three guys in there before they finally pull him down. So that was a great pursuit on defense there by the Coosa Eagles defense. Yeah, you had, uh, you had Eagles flying to the ball there and uh, pulling – Pulling Bowden Owens down behind the line, which is not an easy task. So that's a loss of two, bringing up second down and 12 here for the Tigers. As they'll reset for this next play. Albers is going to run back out on the field here for this next down. Going to send wide receiver to the near side. That is Slade Clevenger. In the backfield behind quarterback Jack Good is going to be Bowden Owens. And they're lining up and sort of a double wing set there's the snap going to hand it off to owens runs off to the near side and he gets brought down at about the 30 yard line by a couple of Coosa eagles it looked like they were led by ronnie merrill ian good tackle there by Coosa once again uh, i mean owens had a crease he got behind gus gamage and was looking to do some damage there he picked up about six so that brings up third down and eight here for the darlington tigers with the ball at the 30-yard line. Staying in the backfield here with Jack Good. The quarterback's going to be Bowden Owens. There's the snap. They're going to turn to the right, cut back to the near side as Bowden Owens. He's got some room to run this time. He's inside the 20, down to the 10, and they're going to bring him down at about the 8-yard line. So a good pick up there by Bowden Owens. Is that a flag I see on the field right there at about the 10? Yes, yeah. it is. So... Regardless, this should be a first down. Could be a face mask. We'll see. No, it's going to be a block in the back. 
on the Tigers. But where it was dropped, I still think that'll be enough for a, for a first down. We'll see how they march this off. They're breaking out yep. Sweet Caroline with the band over here, Ian. Darlington Pep Band is up in their game each week. I love it. Bringing a little more variety to the stands. That will be enough for a Parker and Lundy first down after the penalty yardage is marched off. So Darlington will have it first and 10 at the 20 yard line. Jack Good will line them up, working right to left. Going to send two wide receivers to the far side. You're going to have Talon Shirey and Albers over on that side to the near side. Thompson in the slot, split wide to the left is going to be Clevenger. Here's the snap to Good. He drops back from the 20, puts it in the air, open. Talon Shirey dives into the end zone as he catches it. Touchdown, Darlington Tiger. A 20 yard pass right into the end zone to Talon Shirey. And Good had to thread the needle on that one. That was an absolute bullet for the 20-yard touchdown. And Talon Shirey continues his scoring streak. This guy, uh, if, if he's got a favorite target, he spreads the ball around. But Shirey certainly seems to be uh, the number one out there. So the Darlington Tigers now lead at 20 to 0. They will run back to the line of scrimmage, try to punch another extra point through and make, make this a 21 to 0 game as we get ready for the snap. Snap is on the way, hole looks good, kick on the way, and that one's gonna be right through, and it's 21 to zero, Darlington Tigers. Three possessions for Darlington, three touchdowns, three reasons to celebrate, and this celebration is brought to you by La Scala Mediterranean Bistro. For all of life's celebratory moments, La Scala is there to make them special. Call today to book your holiday party or special event. And as you mentioned, you've had three touchdowns here by the Darlington Tigers. The first one was on a 21-yard run from Bowden Owens with 11.22 left to go in the first quarter to put them up 7-0. to Then it was a reverse to Eli Thompson for the second touchdown. And that was, I forgot to write down the yardage 18 on that yards. play. 18 yeah, yards 18 for yards. Eli Thompson. Put them up 14-0. to And then the touchdown pass of 20 yards to Talon Shire to put them up. 21 to zero, and I should also mention that uh, perfect on extra points today is Ryland Scott. So it's been a great game for the Tigers so far. No doubt about it, man. Uh, yeah, I think any coach would be happy if you told him he's going to be up 21 nothing with three <laughs> minutes and 28 seconds left in the first quarter. Uh, so Thursday nights are going well for the Darlington Tigers. So the ball teed up at the 40, and Tommy Bethel will kick it away. The last kickoff from him was almost recovered by Demarion Floyd of the Tigers. But let's see what they do on this kickoff. Looks like he's going to kick it towards the end zone. That goes up the middle of the field. It's picked up by Hames. He's going to bring it out for the Coosa Eagles. And he will be brought down at around the 25-yard line. Yep. And he's a fast runner. He's one of those guys you got to wrap him up and get him down because if he breaks free, he can break a big play. That was a little bit of a knuckleball from Tommy Bethel. And uh, good coverage by the Tigers. Now that last kick, he found the soft spot, an open spot in the field, and that was almost a really slick onside recovery. But it mattered not. They got the ball right back so far. Kusa, two possessions, two three and outs. They've got to get something going here if they want to stay in this ball game. They're going to send Millsap out wide to the far side, freshman wide receiver. They're going to line up in the pistol, everybody else in tight. They're going to pitch to the left. A little tall sweep is going to Hames. He's running around in the backfield being chased around, and he's able to get maybe two yards, but not a lot doing there on first down. Yeah, he had to work hard for those two yards. Tried to change his direction there and I mean he there was nothing doing off to the to the left side so he cut back and was able to at least get positive yardage. Gus Gamage comes off the field here take a breather. Eagles at the line of scrimmage with second down and eight working left to right from their side of the field at the 27 yard line there's a snap and Dixon's going to turn hand it off swarm of Tigers all over him. He might have got a yard out of that play. Man, a familiar position here for Kusa, third and long. Yeah, it's been tough for him. So third down, pickup of two there on that play. Puts him in a third down and six with the ball in the 29-yard line. Kusa still on their side of the field, and they've gone three and out their first two possessions. So they have not been able to get a first down so far in this first quarter, and the quarter's almost done. We're at the 2-12 mark. 
So the Eagles go back to the drawing board, seeing if they can find something to work with here on offense. It's been tough sledding for them so far in this football game. And like you said, their passing game seems to be predicated around that screen. Um, but I mean, if you can't run the football, it's hard to sell a screen. And it looks like we're going to have a timeout. So Kusa takes a timeout. We'll do the same. 153 left to go here in the first quarter. Darlington 21, Kusa 0. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Shop for your next car, truck, or SUV at Riverside Auto Group. Check out RiversideAutoGroup.com today to browse their selection or visit with them in person at Riverside Chevrolet Buick GMC in Rome, Riverside Toyota in Rome, and the all-new Riverside Buick GMC Cadillac in Cartersville. Locally owned and operated by the Wellburn family since 1974, that's Riverside Auto Group. Visit RiversideAutoGroup.com. Darlington Tigers football on WLAQ and also the live video stream on a Thursday night. And I tell you, it's felt like a weird day all day getting prepared to go to a football game. And that's going to carry over tomorrow. It's going to feel very strange to have Friday night and not have a game in it, Ian. Oh, uh, yeah, very strange. No doubt about it. I haven't even checked scores yet for tonight because I'm just it, – it, it, it's a different feel. Here's third and six for Cusa. They're going to throw a pass, and that is almost intercepted by Sammy Koncheski. They're going to flag, gonna get flag him. Yeah, he, he, put the, he went up to make the catch with his right, but he had his left hand on the shoulder pad of the receiver, and that's, that's an easy flag for him to throw. It would have been a heck of a catch had he pulled that in. So that'll be pass interference on the defense. And they get ready to mark, march off the penalty yards. And with that, the Coosa Eagles are going to have their first down. Yes, Their they first are. first down, I should say. And that's one of those things, Ian, you're having a game like they're having tonight. You get a gift like that on a penalty, and you got to see what you can do to get some momentum going here and try to put together a drive and keep the chains moving. Yeah, and yeah, I don't know. It's going to be tough sledding on the ground here. So I almost feel like they need to continue to attack through the air. So quarterback Josh Dixon now with the play call is gonna send his fellas to the line of scrimmage. This time they're gonna send a couple of wide receivers to the near side. Millsap split wide right and the slot's gonna be Turner. There's the snap. He's gonna turn going towards Turner or actually Millsap and that's gonna be incomplete pass. And yeah, Eli Tom on the coverage there. Got his paw in there to knock that one down, down coverage there. So that's going to bring out second down and 10 here for the Coosa Eagles with the ball at the 44-yard line, still in their territory. Have not been able to get it on the Darlington side of the field so far here in this first quarter. Just got their first first down, and that happened with a pass interference penalty and trying to get something going. Darlington leading this one 21-0. If you're just now joining us, going to send a wide receiver off to the far side. That's Millsap. Dixon takes the snap, turns, hands it off to Haynes, runs it off to the left side. A little bit going there and picked up about two or three yards. Did the ball come out? I thought I saw a tiger running around like he had the ball. I'm not sure. Uh, they were definitely yeah. swarming him, but I believe he held yeah. on to the ball. He got about five yards really? of that play. Yeah. I never thought the ball advanced that far, but... Must have third and five. So they've got the ball almost at midfield at the 49 yard line. Third down and five with 115 left to go in the first quarter. Coos Eagles get ready to bring themselves back to the line of scrimmage from the huddle as clock ticks here in the first quarter. Eagles take their time coming back to the line of scrimmage. Four seconds on the play call. Two. And there's oh. the snap, and they got it off just in time. Batted down, the pass is, and that'll be incomplete. But you're right, they're just letting that play call get all the way down. Yeah, I think Jack Cowan may have batted that one down. I'm trying to see on the replay. Here comes the replay right here. It was Jack yeah. Cowan off the edge there. Great play by number 34. 
you can't get to the quarterback, what do you do? Get those hands up. He's listening to his coaches, executed that well, and uh, the Darlington Tigers are going to get the football back. Gio Oriana is going to punt it away here for the Coosa Eagles. A high booming kick is going to drop in. Fair catch signaled at the 20 by Talon Shirey. And so the Tigers are going to have their worst field position of the game, Ian. They sure are. All the way back at their 20. There's a train. Yep. Is that number one? That's yes, number it is. One. So this would be something interesting to note. Um, I haven't really been keeping up with the first couple of home games that we've had here this year. But how many trains do you have on a Friday night versus a, a Thursday, Thursday night? night? Wouldn't you want to know? No. I do. I will have to keep track tonight. We've had one train. One train thus far. It is rolling by as we speak. <laughs> so the Tigers are going to line up working right to left from their own 20-yard line. Three wide receivers to the near side on the short side of the field. They're going to hand it off to Bowden Owens, and he has got a head full of steam and is going to pick up about five yards there on first down. Quite a scrum there at the end of the play. Love a good scrum. I do too, man. Yeah. And a hard run and there. You're going to get Owens. one from Bowden Owens every time. That guy's going to run behind his pads and keep – Keep moving those legs. Picking up six on first down. Takes the pile with him. So the ball at the 26-yard line for the Tigers. We're going to watch Ashton Albers run out of the field. We may not see another play here. I think they're going to let this one run down and end the quarter. And I think you're right. Two seconds, and that is the end of our first quarter. Darlington Tigers very successful here tonight on homecoming night in the first quarter, leading this one 21 to 0 over the visiting Coosa Eagles. We're going to go ahead and send it back to the studio for a one minute break. We'll come back for the start of the second quarter after these messages. Here, I'm becoming who I want to be. Here, I am looking toward my future. Here, we learn from our failures so that we may soon succeed. Here, we're passionate about learning and trying new things every day. Here, we search for new perspectives and cultures so we can better understand the world. Because at Darlington, we know we're in the most trusted hands. As we discover new passions and learn more about ourselves through academics, athletics, fine arts, and service to our community, we show our versatility as we choose different pathways to our goals. This is our home. We embrace challenges and persevere, even when something seems impossible. We collaborate and create to take our place in the world. We know that together we can make an impact. This is our moment, our time. Graduates today, Darlington forever. Yeah, after a hot start, uh, uh, Chattooga has put up 21 points to our Murchie's 27 in the second quarter. So we've got ourselves a shootout over there in this our Murchie. Second and four. Good's going to turn, hand it off, and he is going to be clobbered, it looked like. At a, probably, probably taking a loss there on that play for Demarion Floyd. He lost about two, three yards. Yeah, yeah, they, they were all over that. Great defense there by Kusa, and they'll have an opportunity here on third and seven to get off the field, something they have not been able to do thus far tonight. Braden Bell is going to check into the game for Ashton Albers. He's going to line up at a wide receiver position here on the near side for third and seven for the Tigers. 11-28 remains in this football game with Darlington leading at 21-0. to They've scored on the first three possessions of the game. Going to stack a couple of receivers here on the near side. As you get ready for good and take the snap, going to send one off to that left side. He's dropping back, looking to throw, goes to the left side, and he's going to catch a wide open pass. Clevenger is on the run. Nobody's going to be able to get him. Trots into the end zone untouched. A big play for the Darlington Tigers. That is a 77-yard pass play for a touchdown. Ian Slade Clevenger, wide open. And good put that one on the money. Just a little play action, D. Floyd, three-step drop and fire. 
He hit him about the 48-yard line, and Clevenger did the rest of the work, taking it to the house. Boy, he has become a household name here for the Tigers of late on both sides of the ball making plays. Number 17 wants to put his name in the cupcake hat. That's right. Of course, Demarion Floyd won the first two this year. Bal Owens has won it. Jack Good has won it. And uh, Slade Clevenger, he's had a couple of games where he was big time in the running and this one being one of them. Here comes the extra point attempt here from Ryland Scott, and that was right through the uprights as well. And we've got a 28-0 ball game in favor of the Darlington Tigers. We sure do. Lots of reasons to celebrate tonight. But this celebration is brought to you by La Scala Mediterranean Bistro. Call them for any of your celebratory events. Book your holiday parties today. The Tigers giving everybody a lot of reason to celebrate that's wearing purple and white. Absolutely no doubt about that tonight. They've scored on all four of their possessions in this football game, forced a couple of three and outs against Kusa. Um, and the last possession that Kusa had, they did get a first down, but it was aided by a pass interference penalty. So it's just been tough sledding on both sides of the ball for the Kusa Eagles. Certainly not trying to pick on them. No, not at it's all. It's just been one of those games. Yeah, it has. I mean, and, and look, so far tonight, when Good has dropped back to pass, he has had a wide open run receivers and he is putting the ball right on the money so they're absolutely torching the the eagles secondary uh the, the they've put them in some positions some third downs where Donaldson's had to execute and convert and, and the tigers have just been up to the challenge each and every time they really have been so the tigers are going to tee it up at the 40 kicking from left to right couple of men back here for the kusa eagles again harley brock and then also you're going to have dj hames to attempt to return this kick. Hames is standing at the far side on the far hash, and then Brock here on the near hash. There's the kick. It goes towards that right side, goes into the end zone, and that is an automatic touchback. So Tommy Bethel continues to be consistent on the kickoffs, making teams march the length of the field is always something he'll be happy with. Of course, the Coosa Eagles over the years have, have had a historic football program. It's been a number of years, but Branch Bragg, when he was the football coach over at Coosa, they had a couple of state championships, 1961 and 1969. And I'll give you a little trivia here in just a couple of moments. Some family tree connection, if you will, here on the broadcast. But first, we're going to have the Eagles lining up at their own 20 as they get ready to start their next drive here in this first half. There's the snap. Dixon is going to put the ball in the air up the middle of the field, and it looked like he had his man open. A little miscommunication. I mean, Turner was going one way, and Dixon threw it the other. He was he was open. Had they been on the same page, that, that could have been taken to the house, to be honest, because you only had one man back. Uh, Demarion Floyd was going to have to find a way to make the tackle, or, or he's gone. So here is the little trivia for you. Of course, Mitch and Branch Bragg getting those state championships at Coosa. Well, Branch's son, Bo, his grandson, Braden Bell for the Darlington Tigers. How about that? And, of course, Bo's son-in-law is the offensive coordinator for the Darlington Tigers, Brent Bell. Here's the snap. Dixon rolling out, looking for somebody downfield. Is going to throw to a wide receiver on the right side. That's going to be incomplete to Haynes. And that's going to bring up a crucial third down here for the Eagles. It is 28 to nothing. The Eagles really need to get something going. They were able to get a first down on their last drive and seen that they had a crack at getting a second first down. Couldn't quite get it done. But they pretty much have to score every time they have the ball to stay in this game because they have yet to stop the Darlington offense. So third down and 10, 10.53 left to go. First half, we're in the second quarter, 28 to zero. Darlington Tigers lead this, and it's been another night of big plays by this Darlington offense, and not to mention excellent field position for the most part. Shotgun formation, they're gonna run a quarterback draw, and he's gonna be dropped after a pickup of about two. So the Eagles are gonna go three and out possession and that is the fourth drive in which the eagles have gone three and out the only drive they didn't they got a pass interference call um that extended the drive and that one went six plays before they punted but all four possessions have ended uh on their side of the field with a punt 
Talon Shower is back to receive at the Darlington 45. We mentioned to you in the pregame, Kusa started the season 0-2, had a hard time getting off the schneid to start the season, reeled off three wins. It's the first time Kusa had been able to do that. Uh-oh, this one's going to be blocked, and it's going to be picked up by the Tigers and brought down <coughs> at about the, what, 13-yard line. Yeah, and that was uh, Ashton Albers that got there for the block, and then McKay Rush recovered. So a block punt recovered, as you mentioned, by McKay Rush, but knocked down by Albers. And Albers and Clevenger, the, the, the 11 and 17 look so similar, but um, I'm 90% I'm sure that was Albers that got his hands on it. So the ball will be on the 13-yard line. Darlington's going to have it deep in Coosa territory in the red zone. Threatened to attack on another six. Twin 06 left to go here in the second quarter of play. Pistol formation, two wide on each side. Going to turn, hand it off to Demarion Floyd. Runs up towards the middle of the field, keeping those legs churning. And he's going to get inside the five and down at about the three, I believe. Wow, hard run so by So many weapons on this Darlington offense. Each week it seems like guys are just contributing more and more, and there's more and more options out there uh, to make plays. So that's going to bring up first and goalie and balls at the three-yard line after a pickup of 10 there by Demarion. A Parker and Lundy first down and goal. So the Tigers threaten to score again. First and goal from the three. Staying in the backfield here with good is going to be Demarion Floyd. There's the snap. They're going to give it to him. He dives towards the end zone, spins around, and into the end zone. That is a three-yard touchdown run for Demarion Floyd. And the Darlington Tigers strike again on Thursday night. And, and Floyd has had a little drought after a non-touchdown and three-game start. So <laughs> I'm sure he's glad to get back in the end zone. He's like, hey, you've been giving the rock to too many other guys. I need a little action. <laughs> he got it there. Heck of a run. Well, that's his first touchdown this season on the Thursday night. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we can have fun with that, huh? And they are going to make it really hard on us. Five different Tigers uh. have scored touchdowns tonight. Here comes the extra point attempt from Ryland Scott on the way, and that one's right down Broadway. Tigers lead at 35-0, and we still have nine minutes and 21 seconds left of the first half. Wow. That's an onslaught here at Chris Hunter Stadium. I, I definitely felt like going into this matchup that Darlington would have the upper hand, but I wouldn't have guessed that we'd be, you know, a few minutes into the second quarter and Darlington would already be up 35-0. So... Yeah, the scoring has been abundant and the celebrating uh, has been as well. And we encourage you to celebrate all your special moments at La Scala Mediterranean Bistro. They sponsor every Darlington score, and we appreciate them doing that. Yes, we do. And this has been a great game for the Tigers. Do want to let you know what we've got coming up programming-wise since we won't have Friday Night Lights coming up tomorrow on WLAQ. It's going to be the Braves versus the Mets. Pre-game at 6.05 p.m. First pitch of 7.20. And I've actually got a breakdown from MajorLeagueBaseball.com on the scenarios that can take place in terms of the division race between the Braves and the Mets. And it's kind of interesting. So we'll break that down at halftime. That'll be one of the things that we talk about since we carry the Braves on WLAQ. They don't, they don't get much bigger than this series in the regular no. season. I, I'd love to go down there and check it out. That one's been so out for a while. Here comes the kickoff from Bethel. That one's going to sail towards the back of the end zone. Another touchback. Yeah, Bethel's just booming them through the end zone. Did you see the stat that they haven't had a sacrifice bunt all season? And yeah. then no, that's never happened in Major League history if they finish the season without one. Well, so, so you're saying that people are going to be watching that with as much attention as waiting for Aaron, Aaron Judge. Judge to hit, hit the 61st? <laughs> he hit the 61st last night. I got to hit 62, know. you know. That's just crazy. But, I mean, I was watching the Clemson-Wake Forest game the other day, and they were breaking into the broadcast with his at-bats, which was I, I, pretty I, interesting. I kind of agree with my boy Stuart Mandel. If people want to watch that, they'll turn it on. Exactly. <laughs> I, I kind of felt that way about it as well. Well, Dixon's under center. He's going to hand it off, going to the right side this time. Ball carrier is Harrison East. They find a little bit of room, picks up a couple of yards there on their first down play. And they have not had much room to run. 
thanks to this Darlington defensive front. I mean, look at those big eaters. Boy, they are ready to play. Bryant Powell, Gus Gamage, Gatlin Hancock, Holland Thomas, they're all ready to play. Jack Cowan's been coming in on third down situations, playing his tail off. This is just a heck of a Darlington defense. So Coos is going to line up with a wide receiver split far to the far side, and they'll line up with everybody else in tight. There's the snap. Dixon's going to turn, hand it off, bounces to the near side, and going to be brought down after maybe a yard brought by Harrison East. He's running in, you know, very spirited. Yeah. But the, the Tigers' defense all over. It's not a lack of effort. Talon Shirey came in and made the tackle on that play after East made a few guys miss. So a couple of tough runs there by Harrison East. Let's see what the Tiger, or excuse me, the Eagles dial up here on third down and five from their own 25, trailing 35 to zero here in the second quarter. They're going to line up with that double wing formation. Everybody in tight. Quarterback under center. Dixon turns, hands it off to Hames, tries to get some room on the edge, and he's going to be brought down behind the line of scrimmage as the Tigers chase him down. And that was Aiden Davis on the tackle on the far side of the field. And yet another three and out for the Coosa Eagles. And the last time they punted, Darlington was able to block and recover it, setting up an easy scoring march from about 10 yards out. Um, earlier, they pressured the kick. We don't know if they got a piece of it or not, but it was a short, maybe 15-yard kick. So is uh, going to have to protect better if they want to get the punt off. Well, we get ready for the punt here from, I believe, Chester Reyes this time. There's the snap. Yeah, they're going to catch a Darlington Tiger in the neutral zone there. But that will not be enough for a first down. It will advance the ball five yards, but Cusa will still punt, punt it away. Well, stay tuned at halftime. We'll talk a little bit about the Braves. We'll give you some scores from other area Thursday night high school football games. Talk about some college games coming up this weekend. And, of course, we'll recap a lot of scoring from the Darlington Tigers here in the first half. Here's the snap. They will get ready to punt the ball away. The kick is away, and it is going to drop in and bounce around at about the 40-yard line. Takes a Kusa roll down to the 38-yard line is where they will down it. The Darlington Tigers still have seven minutes to score points here in this first half. They've scored every time they've touched the football. Five possessions, Matt. And by my count, 18 plays. Wow. And five touchdowns. That is just unbelievable. Five different Tigers have scored. So the Tigers get ready to line up on offense with seven minutes to go, working from left to right on your radio dial until we get to halftime, leading it 35-0. to zero. They're going to send a couple of wide here to the near side. And our Tiger cam's hard at work down there, isn't it? it? Looks like Sammy Koncheski is now in at quarterback for the Tigers. He is. There's the snap. He'll turn, hand off to Demarion Floyd. Man, look at the speed. And he picks up about eight yards. I thought for a second, another step or two, he's going to take it to the house. Yeah, he's always a threat to do just that. They were able to bring him down just short of the first down. And it's going to be fun to see Sammy Koncheski get in and play with the ones. I can't remember if it was the Sonoraville game, but he had to... He had to come in early in the season um, for a key third down and made a great pass. So this, this young man has a lot of potential. He's going to have a couple of wide receivers on each side. Remaining in the backfield flank to his right is going to be to Marion Floyd. Koncheski takes the snap from the gun. He's going to turn, hands it off to Floyd, and Floyd is going to keep the legs turning. He's running down the sidelines. Ooh. Is pushed out of bounds at around the 40. Somehow he stayed in bounds there. Some fancy footwork there from D-Man Floyd. Took a really hard hit at the end of that run, but seems to be just fine. So he uh, he scampers for about 20 yards and another Parker and Lundy first down for the Darlington Tigers. So the ball will now be at the Coosa Eagles 40-yard line with a fresh set of downs for the Tigers. Again, Sammy Koncheski, son of head football coach of the Barry College Vikings, is in at quarterback here in the first half. Give some instructions at the line of scrimmage. Going to send a couple of wide receivers split to each side. There's the snap. Timmy Smith is in the backfield. Here comes a pass from Koncheski. A little bit wobbly, but he connects with his wide receiver, Eli Thompson, and they pick up a good chunk of yards. Got down to about the 30-yard line, Ian. And just shy of the first down, a nine-yard strike from Koncheski to Thompson on first down. It was a shotgun snap. 
little the action rolling out to his right and he fired an absolute strike there he really did that's going to be second down and two here for the tigers sammy kincheski looking really comfortable out there at quarterback here for the tigers and he is just a sophomore so i think we'll be seeing a lot of him in the next couple of years here is the snap to kincheski turns hands it off to nope he's going to keep the football runs it up the middle of the field look at those wheels and he gets down to about the 22 yard line for another here in london first down that'll set up up right there at the 21. Koncheski shows some serious burst there on the read option uh, as he faked that handoff to Timmy. Was it Timmy Smith? I do believe yep, so. And then he cut it up the field for a really nice gain. So the ball now at the 22-yard line inside Coosa territory as the Tigers threaten to get it into the red zone. 540 left to go first half. Dar Darlington leading at 35-0. to zero. One wide receiver split to the far side, a couple here on the near side. In the backfield's Timmy Smith. Koncheski in at quarterback turns, is going to hand it off this time to Timmy. Keeps those wheels turning. He's slammed to the turf after a pickup of about two. And Pacey Smith on the tackle there. So it was Smith on Smith, and it was a rude greeting. It truly was. So that brings up second and nine here for the Tigers. Going to shift a little personnel here before the next play. Clock ticking here in this second quarter. We're down to the 457 mark. Second down and eight. Going to have a four wide set, two on each side. Ball is the 22 yard line here for second down and eight. Man goes in motion. There's the snap. They're going to hand it to the motion man. That's Jones. Runs around the right side. Cuts back to the inside. He's inside the 10. And he's going to be brought down at around the seven yard line. A good run from Hendricks Jones. Went around there. Hendricks Jones picks up yet another Parker and Lundy first down for the Tigers. This one sets up first and goal at the seven yard line. So the Tigers on the move now in the red zone. As the Coos Eagles try to pin their ears back and avoid giving up another score, it's been all Darlington Tigers here in the first half, leading at 35 to zero. 4:15 left until the locker room, and it looks like we are going to have ourselves a running clock in the second half, Ian. Yeah, it sure does, man. Especially if the Tigers can punch this one in. Shotgun formation, first and goal from the eight. There's the snap. They're going to hand it off to Timmy Smith, and he's going to be brought down pretty much immediately, so that should be no gain on the play, bringing up second down. Jacob Hughes blew that play up before it could get started, and that'll set up that will it be second and goal here. Yeah. yeah. Yep. From the seven-yard line. So second and goal from the seven-yard line for the Tigers here on Thursday night football on WLAQ in the live video stream. Timmy Smith will be in the backfield for this package. Going to have a couple of wide receivers to the near side and one to the far side. The one on the far side is Jake Trebus. We get ready for Koncheski to take the snap. It's in his hands. He turns. He's going to hand it off to Timmy Smith. Tries to carry the pile. He's going to get himself close to the five-yard line. That was a hard run by Timmy. Yeah, they, the yards get tougher when you get inside the 20. No doubt about it. And Darlington will have a third down and goal from the five. I tell you what, he's not a big kid, but Timmy can pack a little punch there. Absolutely. Come right at you. Did not go down easy. Sammy Koncheski get ready to take the snap on third and goal from the five. Timmy Smith in the backfield. There's Koncheski dropping out, looking to pass, throws it towards the end zone, and that's going to be incomplete. A defender got in between the receiver and the ball, and it looked like it was knocked down. Yeah, that one uh, was fired in, but uh, it was it was thrown a little bit too far to the inside, and the Kusa defender had a chance to intercept it. Uh, but he had the better chance to make a play on the ball there, and that's going to force a field goal attempt. So we're going to have, what, a 21-yard attempt here for Ryland Scott? Certainly within his range. And we get ready for the snap. Ball on the way. Hole looks good. Kick is on the way, and it is going to be the through the uprights. A 21 or 22-yard field goal there for Ryland Scott. And the Tigers have scored on every possession, Matt. That time led by backup quarterback Sammy Koncheski. They move the ball all the way inside the 10-yard line down to the 5 before uh, falling short on third down and goal, but they were able to get three more points and push their lead to 38-0. 
still with 244 left to go. And if you're watching on the video stream right now, you're getting a look at the Tiger Cam, which is a new feature that they've added to the video this year. Take one more opportunity to recognize the video crew. Of course, Nathan Patterson, the leader of Northwest Georgia Media. Then you got Dave Corbin, who's been along with the video for a long time. Uh, cameras tonight, Uta Patterson, and then Jody Potts. Mike Garrett's your director, and then Clara Patterson. Well, she is the gopher tonight, doing all sorts of things to help that. You can't make it work without your gopher. Yeah, you cannot. Or the gaffer tape. I mean, you got to have that. We learned that from Dave. Yeah. So the Tigers are going to tee this one up. Tommy Bethel will kick it away from the 40-yard line. Two men back. The same for the Coosa Eagles. You're going to have Hames and then Brock, and the ball is going to sail into the end zone, so neither one of them are going to get an opportunity to return it. Bethel continues to excel at putting the ball out of the back of the end zone. Coosa will start this one at the 20. Both teams have two timeouts left with two minutes and 44 seconds left. I don't know if Darwin is going to be too concerned about forcing the issue and getting the ball back, but uh, Kusa would just like to end this with, with something positive. A first down or two would go a long way. And, Ian, we don't want to leave out Millie Potts because she's on the camera up on top of the press box with Dave working hard tonight. Okay. So thanks for your great effort tonight. Millie, you are doing a wonderful job. No doubt about it. Under center is going to be Dixon here for this first down play. He's going to turn, hand it off. They try to go towards the right side, but it's just a bunch of Tigers there swarming and bringing him down for a loss. Ball carrier, Harrison East. Lost one yard there, Ian. Yeah, again, just uh, not much room to run here for Kusa. They're not able to get any push against this defensive front. So the Eagles are moved back one yard, bringing that second down and 11 with 2.14 and the clock ticking here in this second quarter. Darlington leading at 38 to zero. As Ian's pointed out a few times, have scored every time they've had the football in this game. Under center is Dixon. Everybody in tight except for one wide receiver on the right side. They're gonna turn, hand it off again to East and he's gonna be brought down. Maybe picked up a couple of yards on that play, but that's to set up a third down and long. And that has been the position this Eagles offense has been at all night, and they have not been able to connect downfield uh, to pick up these third and long situations. A minute and 40 left. And most like Kusa will let that play clock run all the way down. So two runs from Harrison East and a third down and seven coming up here for the Eagles. Going to send Millsap wide to the right side. Everybody else is going to be in tight. Quarterback under center, Dixon. He's going to turn, hand it off. They go around the right side this time, and the defense was ready for Turner, and he's going to be brought down after a pickup of about a yard. So, and that's going to set up a fourth down and six. So, again, you're going to see the Eagles go three and out. Yeah, and uh, the clock continues to roll. So, uh, Coach Atha and his staff have decided not to call a timeout. Um, they're pretty pleased with how things have gone here in the first half. Yeah, I mean, obviously the scoreboard speaks for itself, but you haven't seen a lot of penalties, no turnovers, anything like that. It's been a clean game played yeah. by the Tigers. So we get ready for the punt here from Kusa, and it is going to be booted away by Gio Ariana, and it drops in and rolls around. Oh, a nice bounce there for Kusa. Gets down to about the 24-yard line, still rolling. Gets to about the 23. And with 25 seconds left, I imagine Darlington will come out and take a knee and take this thing to the locker room. So we're almost at halftime. You want to stay tuned. We got a lot of activities for you here in our halftime program. We're going to run down some scores from other area Thursday night football games. We'll talk a bit about the Braves. The Braves have the night off tonight before they get ready for that series down at Truist Park against the Mets. Big series coming up this weekend that we'll have for you on WLAQ. We'll talk some college football. And we'll just have some fun, man. Great We're kicking slate of back, games. enjoying a Thursday evening. It's perfect for high school football tonight. The weather's great. Loving these fall temperatures. About time. Uh, love it. So Kincheski gets ready to take the snap. He does and takes a knee. And we'll get ready for the locker room at halftime, of course. 
But a great half there for the Darlington Tigers. They score 38 points to Coosa's zero, lead at 38 to zero at home here at homecoming. And the fans are on their feet cheering, excited, enjoying tonight. Got the baby powder in the air. Get ready for that to waft into the window here in just a couple of moments. You'll have that stuck in your nose for the rest of the night. But, folks, we're glad you're with us on WLAQ and also the live video stream. Let's take a four-minute break. Darlington 38, Coosa 0. We'll be back in four minutes. They are super knowledgeable about the market in Rome, whether it's home buying, rental homes, they have their finger on the pulse of what's going on. We both sold a house and bought a house and the transition from both went really smoothly for us. I feel like they've become almost a part of our family. So we're just really appreciative of Hardy and what they've done for us. All their team uh, put together from maintenance to management to sales, uh, I can't really say enough about them. I'd highly recommend them to anybody coming to town or living in Rome looking for uh, investment properties or homes to buy. I'd like to wish the Darlington football team a great season. Go Tigers! Go, Go Tigers! Tigers! Here, I'm becoming who I want to be. Here, I am looking toward my future. Here, we learn from our failures so that we may soon succeed. Here, we're passionate about learning and trying new things every day. Here, we search for new perspectives and cultures so we can better understand the world. Because at Darlington, we know we're in the most trusted hands. As we discover new passions and learn more about ourselves through academics, athletics, fine arts, and service to our community. We show our versatility as we choose different pathways to our goals. This is our home. We embrace challenges and persevere, even when something seems impossible. We collaborate and create to take our place in the world. We know that together we can make an impact. This is our moment, our time. Graduates today, Darlington forever. My name is Ryan Somerville. I am the sales manager for Business Water Solutions. We do water purification coolers as well as ice machines for any size business. We're on campus right now at Darlington School. Super happy to be here. They're one of our biggest customers. I myself played sports here. Our two founders played sports here. It was absolutely our pleasure to be a sponsor for Darlington Athletics. I think one thing that really sets us apart is our water purification. There's 13 stages, the reverse osmosis part of it has been a huge part of our success, along with our 24-hour guarantee for service calls. So when a customer does call us, we're then guaranteed within 24 hours. We were able to provide a touchless water system to make it more COVID-friendly in terms of germs and, and touching the, the water system. One thing I always say is we're not selling a product, we're selling our service. That's what we really push for every single day is to have a customer service experience like they've never had before. Shop for your next car, truck, or SUV at Riverside Auto Group. Check out RiversideAutoGroup.com today to browse their selection or visit with them in person at Riverside Chevrolet Buick GMC in Rome, Riverside Toyota in Rome, and the all-new Riverside Buick GMC Cadillac in Cartersville. Locally owned and operated by the Welburn family since 1974. That's Riverside Auto Group. Visit RiversideAutoGroup.com.
from the Darlington School YouTube channel. We got about 16 minutes and 35 seconds before we begin our second half. Of course, right now, Darlington Tigers have been in control of this one from the very first kickoff of the game, leading at 38 to zero. As you pointed out, Ian, they've scored on every possession, scored a touchdown their first five possessions and then uh, would settle for a field goal on that last possession that they had in the first half but it's just been an offensive explosion tonight here from the Darlington Tigers. It has. Our uh, our first down and uh, celebratory sponsors, Parker and Lundy and Lascala, have to be happy tonight because the Tigers are moving the chains and they're reaching the end zone. They're putting it through the uprights. Rylan Scott, a perfect five for five on extra points. One for one on field goals. Five different Tigers have reached the end zone. Uh, nothing went wrong for the Darlington Tigers in the first half. It really did not and before we kind of recap the scoring from the first half in, I'm just kind of itching to know about the other Thursday night light scores yeah. going on tonight. Yeah, so, uh, you, you know, Matt and I were on the on the radio airwaves this morning, you know, making our picks confidently, uh, making the pick that Cartersville would handle business against Calhoun. Game's at Cartersville. 28-7 Calhoun wow. is the score. Uh, our friend Alex Fair was just telling us that uh, Cartersville turned it over three times early in the ballgame. Calhoun's taking advantage of that. Turnovers have been a problem for the Yellow Jackets most of the season. Uh, but tonight, the Hurricanes are coughing the ball up, and we know they can come back. They came back from down 20 points against Alatoona, so we'll keep a close eye on that score going forward. Uh, Model has been red hot, but they had to head to the Rock tonight. And the sledding has been tough. Rockmart leads that one 34 to seven at halftime. Ooh. I thought that one would be a little bit closer. We both like Rockmart to win that game, but uh, I didn't think it would, the margin would be quite that wide. I was curious if Model could get out. They played really good defense throughout the season. Would they be able to set the tone with that defense? And the answer to that question looks like at this point is a no. Well, I think a lot of people looked at Rockmart's two and two record and oh, they're just two and two. But I mean, your losses are to a fire-breathing Cedar Town Bulldog football team, and then Irwin County, which which is a, a perennial powerhouse. Uh, and those were both narrow margins of victory for those two teams. So uh, I think Rob Mart's flexing a little bit this week, and they deserve to do so. Um, but a little bit unexpected. Uh, and then uh, out at our Murchie, you've got a battle of, of Indians. And uh, our Murchie had a hot start, but Chatugas fought back in that game. It's 27-21 at the half. Uh, Gordon Central trails Harrelson County 28 to 6 at the half. No surprise there. Gordon Central's had a real tough year. Uh, and then the only other game going on tonight uh, of local interest is the Rome Woodstock game. We thought it would be a bloodbath. It's a bloodbath. Rome <laughs> leads 42 to nothing. Uh, and that one's still in the second quarter. So I think that Woodstock team was 0 and 10 last year, and they're an off to an 0 and 5 start this year also. So, like you say, that's that's not a big shocker there. No, make it 0 and 6. And, you know, you talked about this Rome team last week, really busted things wide open in terms of their offense, had a big game uh, in their victory last week. So, um, you know, looking for some big things for Rome down the stretch. So, we've, we've got some really good football teams in the North. West Georgia area this year. Yeah, a lot of teams that have, uh, you know, should be in the conversation for making run at state championships, which is always exciting. Well, Ian, we're going to take another break here at halftime, about a three-minute break. When we come back, we're going to recap the scoring from our first half here at Darlington. We'll also talk a little bit of Braves baseball and some other things here during our halftime period. But it's homecoming tonight. Of course, they're introducing the homecoming court. All the, the young men and young ladies out there uh, just looking wonderful tonight, aren't they, Ian? They are, man. This is a special time in your life. It goes by quick. No doubt about it. Well, we are going to send it back to the studio. Darlington leads it at half, 38-0 to zero over Coosa here in a, a really important region game for both teams. We'll send it back to the studio for a three-minute timeout and be back on WLAQ and the live stream.
here for Thursday night football. Darlington Tigers on top, 38 to zero. And I want to take this opportunity to thank our buddy over here to our left, Alex Ferrer from the Rome News Tribune Sports Editor. Be able to read his coverage coming up. I know he's excited about having you know everything in the paper coming up this weekend regarding all the coverage of the games and things of that nature. And uh, we always love it when he's sitting next to us because he's great for conversation. But at the same time, he's always passing us sheets with some stats and stuff like that, which is very helpful as well. And we always appreciate that. Absolutely. We'll give you the breakdown here. Uh, Kusa had 28 total yards, 22 on the ground, six through the air. Uh, Darlington, on the other hand, had 292 total yards, 174 passing, 118 rushing. Uh, some of the individual stats, and these guys are done for the night uh, as the twos took over uh, with that last possession of the half. But Bowden Owens had 49 yards on five carries and a touchdown. Demarion Floyd had 34 yards on seven carries and a touchdown. Eli Thompson had one carry for 15 yards and a touchdown. And then uh, Jack Good, six of seven for 166 yards, two touchdowns. Talon Shirey had a 20-yard TD catch and Slade Clevenger reeled in the long ball, the 77-yard catch, run, and score. So that's your breakdown of the statistics in the first half, and it was a good one for the Darlington Tigers. Oh, you are not kidding. And, of course, for the Darlington Tigers, you would pick up most of your offense there in the, in, in the first quarter of play. You would pick up a touchdown on the first possession on a 21-yard run from Bowden Owens. Then the second touchdown of the night came on a reverse to Eli Thompson for 18 yards. It put him up 14 to zero. Then it was the touchdown pass of 20 yards to Talon Chirey from, from good. And with 328 left to go in the first quarter. Then the 77-yard pass to Clevenger, the big play that you talked about with 11.02 left to go in the second quarter to put the Tigers up 28 to zero. Then D-Man would score on a three-yard run to Marion Floyd to put the Tigers up 35 to zero with 921 left to go in the first half. And then the final score of that first half was a 22-yard field goal attempt that was good for Ryland Scott, who was also, as you pointed out, perfect on his extra point attempt. So that was as good a half as you could possibly ask for for the Darlington Tigers. They lead at 38 to zero. Yeah, yeah, you, <laughs> yeah pretty, I mean, pretty what, solid execution. What else execution? could you have possibly yeah. done yeah, to right. make that a better half yeah. for the Tigers? Very, very solid start. Uh, puts them in a position where they can get some other younger players some experience in the second half, which huh? is invaluable at this point in the season. Let's talk some Braves baseball. Let's do Want it. To? Yeah. Okay, so, of course, you know, since we have high school football for you tonight on Thursday, the Braves have a night off tonight. They'll get ready for that big series against the Mets. Earlier in the week, it was kind of dicey in terms of the weather. It looked like they were looking at some possible neutral location aspects of the series, or maybe they would end up playing a doubleheader to get in a couple of the games at the end of the year or end of the season, regular season, before the playoffs start, all that sort of thing. But it looks like that is not going to be a factor in terms of this series. So the Braves will play tomorrow night. Uh, first pitch for game one is going to be at 7.20, pregame on WLAQ at 6.05. Same thing on Saturday and then on Sunday. That's been picked up by ESPN, so that'll be a 7.08 first pitch. So in terms of the series, here is what's at stake, and this is according to MLB.com, so if any of this is incorrect, blame them. Blame them, not me. This is their words from their site. Full credit for them, whether it's right or wrong. But it says if the Mets win all three games, they clinch the NL East title. So that's pretty clean there. If they win two of three, they will have an, eff an effective magic number of one, making them prohibitive favorites to win the division. Even if the Mets win only one of three, they'll remain in control of their own destiny. For the Braves, a three-game sweep would swing the division back in their favor, giving them a two-game lead with three games to play. Atlanta finishes off with the Marlins, I believe, and they would need to win at least two of the three games to have a realistic shot at a fifth consecutive NL East title. The division winner is guaranteed to earn the number two seed and a first-round bye into the NL Division Series, while the loser will be the number four seed and host a best-of-three wild-card series against the Padres, Phillies, or the Brewers. So the Braves really need to find a way to sweep the series coming up against the Mets this weekend, which, you know, is, is something that possibly they can do, but that's going to be a pretty tall order. Isn't? That is a tall order. With the pitching that the Mets have, uh, it's going to be a very tall order. Two out of three would be huge. A sweep would be... Uh, Amazing. So uh, that's what all us Braves fans are hoping for uh, is a sweep of the Mets. They've done it one other time this season, I do believe. 
They were the only team to sweep the Mets, I, be, I believe, the last time they played. I'll gotcha. have to check that out. Uh, and if my if our buddy Kenneth Stutter, and he's about the biggest Braves fan I know, he could confirm that for us. Um, I've been texting with him a little bit throughout the game. He would certainly know that for sure. But you sounded pretty confident. I think that. the Nats got him after yeah. that because they, they somebody made fun of him for, for – <laughs> being swept by the Nats. There was somebody that was awful uh, along the way. But the, I think the Braves were the first team that, in the NL East to sweep the Mets this season. Gotcha. Well, Braves and Mets coming up on WLAQ this weekend. We're very excited to have that. And then the rest of the way this weekend, we'll have a lot of CBS sports for you. Of course, they'll keep you uh, up to date on stuff going on with the NFL this weekend, college football, and all that kind of stuff. So we do have a lot of sports programming coming up for you on WLAQ throughout your weekend. It's going to be a fantastic weekend. You got it, that Brave series. You got college football, NFL. It's going to be a great weekend. And then you were mentioning to me earlier, you know, obviously we, we're certainly thinking about all the, the folks in the path of Hurricane Ian. And I know that you mentioned to me earlier uh, when you were at the radio station this morning that you got some family down there in Central oh, yeah. Florida. Yeah. And I know you've been really concerned about them. <laughs> I talked to uh, talked to all of them. I, uh, my cousin and, and her husband, they had a tree on their house in both their cars. Uh, that was in Orlando. Um, so that's been the most significant damage. And then my, uh, my cousin in Tampa has had a little flooding. Uh, I think it got to their garage, but now that it's passed, no major damage was done um, without power and things like that. But uh, uh, compared to some others, I think they all got lucky. I've got an uncle that lives in College Park down there in Orlando, and I don't think they've had any flooding or anything real significant, um, but they've lost their power, and who knows when they'll be able to get that back. And one of the things that he pointed out today that was really interesting, I saw him post on his Facebook page, was it was like 66 degrees this afternoon in Orlando, and uh, he was betting that that's probably about the first time in history that's ever happened on this date. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's usually sweltering. Uh, in Orlando yeah. pretty much year round. But. Well, Ian, we're going to go ahead and take one more break. We've got two minutes left in the halftime period, and then there'll be a three minute mandatory warm up period for both of these teams before we get some football going here for the second half. So let's go ahead and take a three minute break down the line. 38 uh, 0, Darlington on top at halftime of Coosa Eagles. And we're going to step out for three minutes. We'll come back for the second half after these messages. We'll be back. <laughs> They are super knowledgeable about the market in Rome, whether it's home buying, rental homes. They have their finger on the pulse of what's going on. We both sold a house and bought a house, and the transition from both went really smoothly for us. I feel like they've become almost a part of our family, so we're just really appreciative of Hardy and what they've done for us. All their team uh, put together from maintenance to management to sales. Uh, I can't really say enough about them. I'd highly recommend them to anybody coming to town or living in Rome looking for uh, investment properties or homes to buy. I'd like to wish the Darlington football team a great season. Go Tigers! Go Tigers! My name is Ryan Somerville. I am the sales manager for Business Water Solutions. We do water purification coolers as well as ice machines for any size business. We're on campus right now at Darlington School. Super happy to be here. They're one of our biggest customers. I myself played sports here. Our two founders played sports here. It was absolutely our pleasure to be a sponsor for Darlington Athletics. I think one thing that really sets us apart is our water purification. There's 13 stages, the reverse osmosis part of it has been a huge part of our success, along with our 24-hour guarantee for service calls. So when a customer does call us, we're within guaranteed within 24 hours. We were able to provide a touchless water system to make it more COVID friendly in terms of germs and, and touching the, the water system. One thing I always say is we're not selling a product, we're selling our service. That's what we really push for every single day is to have a customer service experience like they've never had before. 
shop for your next car, truck, or SUV at Riverside Auto Group. Check out RiversideAutoGroup.com today to browse their selection or visit with them in person at Riverside Chevrolet Buick GMC in Rome, Riverside Toyota in Rome, and the all-new Riverside Buick GMC Cadillac in Cartersville. Locally owned and operated by the Wellburn family since 1974. That's Riverside Auto Group. Visit RiversideAutoGroup.com. back to the friendly confines of Chris Hunter Stadium. We're hanging out at the lakeside tonight watching some football on Jerry Shark Field and whether you're with us tonight, you know, watching the video or listening on the radio, we appreciate you being with us tonight and glad to bring you this game. And if you're a Darlington Tiger fan, you're really happy right now because the Tigers are really in control of this game, 38-0. to zero. As a matter of fact, I just got word from our buddy Coach Gordon Powers. He mentioned to me that he has heard that there will be a running clock for the third and fourth quarters of this football game. So it looks like the coaching staffs have agreed uh, to that for the second half. All right, so this one will go by quickly, but we'll get to see some of these younger Tigers and Eagles get out on the field and get some experience. Um, and, you know, I, we've always commended Coach Atha and his staff for how they develop these guys and get them in in important situations, I think. They roll the players in and get them valuable reps, but uh, when you can let them get out there and, and really get into the rhythm of a game like this, that's going to be beneficial because uh, you never know when you're going to need a player to step up in a, in a big moment, and, and having these reps will go a long way. And I just got a question about some of the other games, of course. We, we mentioned most of them are getting played tonight, but, Ian, there are some games getting played on Friday night that uh, that are important. You got Dade County going up to try and Sam R. McCain going to play uh, at 7.30 tomorrow evening. I'd imagine there'll be some Darlington folks taking that one in because obviously uh, Darlington will play Trine later in the season. That's a good Dade County team. That should be an interesting matchup, I think. Oh, I think so. I mean, you know, Trine was absolutely unstoppable in their first three games and then Model came to town. I think I know you and I both thought Trine would win that game and Model really shocked them in that ball game. Uh, so we're really trying to figure out where Trine is. Their level of competition in, in non-region wasn't as high as a lot of the other teams in the region. Uh, we expected them to be one of the teams that challenged Darlington. I think we'll find out a lot uh, about how they perform against this Dade County team because like Coach Atha said in the pregame, that's a good Dade County team. Very good team, and that was a great win for the Tigers last week on the road. Adairsville's at Lafayette on Friday. you got Gordon Lee at Cahulla Creek, a Friday night game. And then uh, Central Carrollton plays at Cedartown on Friday. And by the way, we haven't said anything about Pepperell tonight because the Pepperell Dragons, well, they have a bye week this weekend. So that's the reason why we hadn't mentioned them. But uh, we've got the Tigers about to tee things up and ready to roll here as – Kusa would win the toss at the beginning of the game. They deferred the second half. So we're going to see them on offense to start this second half, and they need a lot of it if they're going to climb back into this football game. Yes, they do, man. It has been all Darlington all night. The only first down Kusa could muster came on a pass interference call in the second quarter. Other than that, it has been three and out. So here's Tommy Bethel to kick it away for the Tigers. We typically see him boot it into the end zone for a touchback. We did see him kick it onside one time in the game, but obviously we're not going to see that with the Tigers up 38 to zero and a running clock in the second half. And by the way, the second half is underway and the kick is going to go into the end zone for a touchback and actually bounces out of the back of the end zone. Yeah, it hits square on the center of the D over there in the far side of the end zone. So what are you going to do with your Friday night this week since things got shifted forward a day? Well, you know, my 15-year-old washes dishes at Schroeder's, so I won't get to hang out with him, but my 7-year-old will be real happy to have his old man home on a Friday night. So that's uh, that's what I've got in store. He likes watching football with me, so we'll probably throw it on GPB and see how the high school games go. No doubt. And, of course, GPB is at Cartersville tonight, an interesting game there. 
Dixon is going to line up, and he rolls out, looking to throw, puts the ball in the air, and that's going to bounce up to his receiver, incomplete, intended for DJ Hames. Just not much working for the Eagles. That time Dixon had uh, he had time back there. He just That ball slipped up his hand. He had his receiver open. But the passing game has been disjointed much of the night. So the Eagles will go back to the drawing board. First, now second down and 10 with the ball at their own 20 after a touchback starts the second half and they'll run back to the line of scrimmage. Going to send Millsap wide to the near side. Coos is working from right to left on your radio dial under center is going to be Dixon. He gets ready to take the snap. He'll turn and hand it off. They find a little bit of room to run. That's going to be East on the carry and he picks up about five or six yards. And Aiden Davis comes up from his secondary position to make the tackle. Another third and long situation for the Coosa Eagles. So third down and six here for the Eagles as they get ready to come back to the line of scrimmage from the huddle. It's just after nine o'clock. You're listening to high school football on WLAQ. And the ones are still out there on defense. You know, one name we haven't called all night, the sophomore. That's right. We, we sure his have name. Yeah, no. The D-line's been doing such a good job. He hadn't had anything to clean up. A turn and a handoff <laughs> from Dixon. They Ball's loose. Ball's loose, and the, the Tigers are saying they've got it. We hadn't seen them come up from the pile, but there's the signal, and that is going to be a turnover from Kusa. The Tigers pick up a fumble. And I don't, I'm going to try to catch it on the replay, Matt. I don't know if we'll see it. It was in a crowd. But on third down, Kusa once again fails to convert this time. Me just a second, Matt. There's the exchange. Ball came loose, and I think Aiden, I think Aiden Davis got in there to recover that. I could not see it on the replay. So the Tigers will trot their offense back in on the field after the fumble recovery. Did our best to try to pick up who it was, but sometimes you just don't have a clear view no matter what the situation is. So the Tigers are going to start at the Kusa 23 with nine minutes and 39 seconds left on the clock. Koncheski in at quarterback. There's a snap. He'll turn, hand off to Timmy Smith, and he's going to be tripped up after a short gain of about a yard. Yeah, Smith greeted rudely there at the line of scrimmage. Thank you for being with us for this First six games of the season. It's hard to believe after tonight's action is over. We're over halfway through the regular season. It's just clipping by as it always does. I say that all the time. It's like, well, you got to believe it because it's always that way. Yeah, but, we know it's coming, but we don't like to. We don't like to accept it. We want the season to. We want to savor it. Four wide receiver set for Koncheski from the gun. He's going to turn, hand it off. They're going to run it to the near side, and not a lot doing there. So he's going to be stopped. After a pickup of maybe a yard. Yep, he got close to a yard. So that sets up third down and seven for the Tigers. And again, they were given a short field after the fumble recovery. And right now they got third and seven with the ball at the 21 yard line. And that was Noah Duggan that had that carry. Right now we're seeing some fresh faces out there. Jake Trebus, Hendricks Jones, K Rush all playing wide receiver. And this is a four wide set, by the way, for third down and seven. There's the snap. Kancheski's going to hand it off. Timmy Smith is going to run up the middle, keeps those wheels turning, and he's going to be brought down after he picked up a few yards of forward progress. But, man, I'm just impressed with how hard that young man runs. Like you said, what he lacks in stature, he, he makes up for an effort. Um, he's very, very quick. But uh, considering his his. He meets those big nasties on the other side. He keeps the pile moving. He really does. If he gets his number called, he's going to give everything he's got to that carry. Another substitution for the Tigers. Noah Duggan checks back in. So Koncheski lines him up. They'll go for it on fourth down and three here. And Koncheski ready to take the snap with Timmy Smith in the backfield. They're going to hand it to him, stays up, tries to break a couple of tackles, but I think he's going to be left a little bit short there, Ian, by about a couple yards. Yeah, so that'll be a turnover on downs, a big stand for Kusa. And they will take over back at their own 15-yard line. And the clock ticking here in our second half. We're, we're in the third quarter with a running clock here for the third and fourth quarters. It'll go quick, ladies and gentlemen, when 
when they decide to go this route, the game ends in the blink of an eye. And it is a school night after all. So Kusa's going to start off with the ball at their own 14-yard line, so not good field position here and a big hill to climb down 38 points to zero. 6.40 left to go in the third quarter. Eagles come back to the line of scrimmage, working right to left. Going to send a man wide to the right side. Everybody else is going to be in tight. Dixon under center. He'll turn. He'll hand it off, and they try to get a good push up front, which is tough to do against these Tigers, and they're able to muscle forward about a yard or so, bringing up second down and about nine to go. Got a little trap play there, and Darlington once again just giving them nowhere to go. Uh, score update, uh, and one I might want to rub in on that just a little bit. <laughs> Any chance you get. Our, Any chance our, you get. Our mercy is leading 47 to 21 wow. in the third quarter. An offensive explosion from the Indians. I picked the Indians. So did Matt. He just picked the wrong Indians this week. And so what? We're lot. We're going to no, have I got one, game one game leave. And congratulations. I'm not talking to you the rest of the night. <laughs> There's the snap. Dixon's going to put it in the air, and that is going to be batted down. A great defensive play by the Darlington Tigers and Miles Twyman making a good his, play. His sister wins homecoming queen. He goes out and gets a pass breakup. Way to go, Miles. Nice coverage. That was a good ball from Dixon. Uh, Twyman just judged the ball well, went up and high-pointed and made the play. And a freshman this year. So probably the first of many excellent plays that we're going to see from that young man over the next few years. Big night for the Twyman family. Yeah, and you know, uh, his dad, Chris Twyman, used to work at the radio station when Chris was in high school. How That's about how that? I first met him. I went to high school with, uh, with Miles' mother, Tasha. Here's the snap. Dropping back is Dixon, and he's got company in the backfield. He's going to put it in the air, and that's going to be incomplete. So that brings up third down. No, actually fourth down here for the Eagles, and they're going to have to punt this ball away. And another three and out for this Kusa offense. Four minutes and 30 seconds left in the third quarter. And Geo is going to punt this ball away here for the Coosa Eagles. Going to have a man standing back at midfield. Talon Shirey, always a step away from breaking a big one. So no matter what happens here, oop, a bobbled snap. He brings it down, does get the kick away pretty cleanly there. It's going to drop and roll back. Talon Shirey gets out of the way, and it rolls down to about the 41-yard line. And that's where it'll be down. So a pretty good punt. And, you know, the snap was bobbled, so a good recovery there for the punter. Yeah, yeah Darlington had been bringing pressure on on their their punt team most of the first half, but they laid back and, and tried to set up the return that time, and that allowed them to bobble the snap and get it off. But still, this Darlington defense would love to pitch a shutout. That's always a special uh, effort. When you can put a goose egg up on against your opponent, put it on the board. And they have not done that this year. They came close last week, only gave up seven points to Dade County, which and Dade moved the ball. I know, and Dade moved the ball a lot, but they just they bent, but they would not break. So shotgun formation for the Tigers. Koncheski turns, he hands it off to Timmy Smith, and he is going to be brought down and wrestled down to the ground. Uh, no gain there on first down, breaking up second and ten. Rassled. <laughs> that rassled. Right, W-R-A-S-S-L-I-N. Rassled. I know last year in one of our games, uh, Gatlin Hancock pulled a power bomb. That was uh, that was pretty awesome. I, I've got to watch some of the things I say. I don't know where I'm getting this influence from, but I've gotten to where I say seven, seven. I got to quit doing that. My wife gets me all the time about that. What, what's the temperature on? 70? <laughs> Koncheski rolls out looking to throw. And it's complete. Hauled out of bounds after the complete pass. Was that Gray Frick? Yeah, that is yeah. Gray Frick's on the reception. I knew it was him or Trebus. That eight and nine, when you're this far away, you have to look closely. Yeah, you nice, do. I'm pretty nice sure it was nine. It was. It was yeah. freaks on reception, for sure. So split to the near side is going to be Aiden Davis here for the Tigers. Again, Koncheski in at quarterback. He came in towards the end of the second quarter of the football game and is doing a fine job. 
three wide receivers, two on the near side, one on the far side for third down and one. There's the snap, a handoff to Timmy Smith, and he gets a good push up front, yeah. and he got it. That's going to be a first down. The first, Park and Lundy, first down of the second half. Timmy Smith picks it up, keeps the chains moving for the Tigers. And of course, the clock rolling. Running clock here in the second half, 142 left to go in the third quarter. Darlington leading it where they led at halftime, 38-0. to zero, And they've got the ball across midfield on Coosa's side of the field at the 47-yard line, getting ready for this first and 10. Kincheski lines him up in the gun. Going to have three wide. There's the snap. He's rolling out, looking to throw. Puts the ball in the air. Connects with his wide receiver. He started Ooh. to turn before he'd secured the ball. Took a heavy hit, and he hung he on. He hung on to what it. What a catch for Aiden Davis. I, I, I tell you what, Davis had it, and then it looked like it was going to be intercepted when he bobbled it, but he was able to pull that ball away from the defender and, and reel it in for a four-yard gain, a three-yard gain. So second down and seven for the Tigers. That was kind of a wild sequence there on that pass play davis comes off the field gonna have two wide on well, one wide to the near side i'm gonna have a couple lining up on the far side here for the second and seven play with timmy smith back there in the backfield he's the bell cow here in the second half here for the tigers on offense here comes the snap to Koncheski. He's going to hand it off to Timmy. He runs off the left side, finds some room, and I see him, and that's going to be another Parker and Lundy first down. Yes, it is. Smith found a seam there, and at this point in the game, Matt, we've got the twos in. All the all the, the upperclassmen big eaters are on the sideline. Uh, ready for their post-game meal, and they've got the they've got the twos out there. So uh, it's going to be fun to watch these guys execute together. Ball's on the 36-yard line now in Coosa territory. Darlington working from left to right. Eight seconds on the clock. I think we've seen our last play of the third quarter as the clock will wind down when we get ready for the final 12 minutes of the fo football game. We're going to take a break. Darlington leads it where they led at halftime, 38-0 after three quarters of play. Let's step out for one minute on WLAQ and the Darlington live stream. My name is Ryan Sarville. I am the sales manager for Business Water Solutions. We do water purification coolers as well as ice machines for any size business. We're on campus right now at Darlington School. Super happy to be here. They're one of our biggest customers. I myself played sports here. Our two founders played sports here. It was absolutely our pleasure to be a sponsor for Darlington Athletics. I think one thing that really sets us apart is our water purification. There's 13 stages. The reverse osmosis part of it has been a huge part of our success, along with our 24-hour guarantee for service calls. So when a customer does call us, we're then guaranteed within 24 hours. We were able to provide a touchless water system to make it more COVID-friendly in terms of germs and, and touching the, the water system. One thing I always say is we're not selling a product, we're selling our service. That's what we really push for every single day is to have a customer service experience like they've never had before. Friendly confines of Chris Hunter Stadium. They're playing on Jerry Sharp Field tonight here at the lakeside and it's been all Tigers. They're up 38 to zero as we get ready for everybody to swap sides of the field. Now the Tigers working right to left. And it looks like we're going to see Hendricks Jones in at quarterback now. He'll take the snap, hand it off to Timmy Smith, who runs to his right, breaks a couple of tackles, picks up about four yards, another big hard run there from Timmy. Yeah, making the most of his carries tonight. Looked like he was going to get gobbled up in the backfield. But he's able to shake the tackle and get upfield for four yards on first down. Hendricks Jones, the third quarterback into the game tonight here for the Darlington Tigers. Saw a lot of snaps from Sammy Koncheski. And then, of course, Jack Good having another big night tonight, playing in front of the home crowd. And as we've talked about a lot throughout the broadcast and with Coach Atha in the pregame, he's just getting better and better every week. And Coach mentioned to me earlier this week that he thinks the ceiling's still higher for him. There's going to be a run from the quarterback. Hendricks Jones shakes free. He is gone. It's a house call. Touchdown, Hendricks Jones of the Darlington Tigers. But I believe we got a flag. We do have a hanky. And it's all the way on the far side of the field. So this is going to be one of those annoying holding calls way away from the play. Um, 
But this one's going to come back, unfortunately. So instead of a 32-yard run for a touchdown for Hendricks Jones, there's a holding call. And as you mentioned, this one is going to come back here for the Darlington Tigers, and the score will remain 38-0. to zero. See where they march this off from, Matt. May still result in first down. Not sure. No, they'll be short of the first down. It's going to be at the 30-yard line, so that brings up a second down and four here for the Tigers. And Jones was brought in in a couple of Wildcat-esque uh, situations last week against Dade County. He's a shifty runner who just showcased some really good speed as well. Well, let's see if they go to him again here in a quarterback here with second down and four. I wouldn't be, su be surprised to see him running again on this play. We'll see. Here's the snap. Jones is going to turn and hands it off. They go to the right side. This time, Miles Twyman carries the ball and picks up a few yards. I don't think it was quite enough to get the first down, but sets him up in a third and short situation. Yeah, Miles, Miles Twyman got out on the outside on the perimeter there, cut it back upfield, and picked up three tough yards. So that sets up third and one here for the Tigers offense. 10.30 and the clock rolling here in the fourth quarter. It looks like for the first time this year, we're going to get started with the Rome Orthopedic Center high, high school football scoreboard show well ahead of time. So uh, we may get a little bit creative there. We'll talk about that in a minute. But um, here's the snap. Going to be a handoff again to Twyman. Tries to bounce off a defender, and this time they're going to wrap him up and bring him down, led by Harrison East. Yeah, I'm at the Tigers will go for it here with the running clock. Fourth down and three. And they are going to keep the offense on the field. Hendricks Jones might look like they'll stay in the backfield. With Noah Duggan over there at the sniffer back position. That's right. That's right. Gordon Powers taught me that that definition of that position you one got, time when I was covering model football. You got Gray Fricks and Trenton Moore on the field at receiver. And also Jace Hatcher, number 15. Uh, looks like Darlington may have to spend a time out to get the substitution straight. Okay, well while they do that, we're going to take one as well. Darlington 38, Kusa 0, 920 left and a running clock here in our uh, fourth quarter of play. We're going to step out for 30 seconds. Shop for your next car, truck, or SUV at Riverside Auto Group. Check out RiversideAutoGroup.com today to browse their selection or visit with them in person at Riverside Chevrolet Buick GMC in Rome, Riverside Toyota in Rome, and the all-new Riverside Buick GMC Cadillac in Cartersville. Locally owned and operated by the Welburn family since 1974. That's Riverside Auto Group. Visit RiversideAutoGroup.com here in the second half of the football game. But as you've mentioned, the, the key part of this second half is, is you've got second and third string guys getting some, some really good snaps in this game. And that's one of the things that Darlington always does. Any opportunity they've got to get some guys some live game reps, get them some experience, and get them ready for when their number is called. And you never know when that's going to be. Um, that's certainly what you want to do. Hendricks Jones at quarterback is going to take the snap. It's a little bit over his head. Can't field it. Now he's going to drop on it and is going to avoid the turnover there. But that was some pretty interesting things happening there on that high snap. Yes, it was. Uh, Jones was lucky to get back on the ball. It's going to be a turnover either way. But you didn't want Kusa to have the opportunity to advance it. Um, and we had train number two while all that was going down. So a turnover on downs for yes. the Tigers. And now Kusa will get the ball back with 8.52 remaining in this football game. Rome Orthopedic Center High School football scoreboard show is coming up in just a little bit. We're going to have a long show tonight. <laughs> Everybody's going to be in tight as Dixon gets ready to take the snap. He is going to turn, puts it in the air. Pretty good ball, nice spiral, and that is caught streaking down the sidelines with it. It's going to be Millsap, and it's not going to be a shutout tonight. That's a big play of 61 yards there for the Kusa Eagles, and they get a little something for the highlight reel here late in this game, Ian. Yeah, yeah, absolute dime there by Dixon. He put that one right on the money. Uh, his receiver was able to get behind the coverage, and the Eagles uh, have been able to put one on the board and avoid the shutout. So Dixon to Millsap, 61 yards on the pass play. 
And Kusa's on the scoreboard, 38 to six. We'll get ready for the extra point attempt. And this is gonna be handled by Chester Reyes, a sophomore, and he will get ready to attempt to punch it through. Kick is on the way, and that one's gonna sneak right in. The right upright, so Reyes with an extra point, and it's 38 to seven. So, just when it looks like Darlington would get out of here, pitching the shutout, Kuza hits a bomb down the left side of the field, the far side of the field, and gets on the board. Cuts this thing to 38-7. And I got to tell you, man, um, obviously the quarterback for, for the Coosa Eagles, Josh Dixon, that was a great throw from him. Absolutely. He had time to throw. That helps. Was able to set his feet uh, most of the night. Uh, this pass rush has, has caused Coosa to roll him out, so he's been throwing on the move. Uh, but he looked very comfortable stepping into that throw and put it right where it needed to be. Yeah, and if anybody has followed the Dar Darlington Tigers over the years, uh, Coach Hunt's been the defensive coordinator, I think, for about 16 years. And as Coach Atha points out in our interviews, quite often he is not afraid to dial up the pressure and let his guys get after him. They do it often. Do a fantastic job. He is an excellent defensive coordinator. And, Matt, we had some confusion there. <laughs> Uh, teams were lined up in the wrong direction. I, I don't know if I've witnessed that. Well, it's interesting. It's been a confusing week. It's yeah, Thursday, it's Thursday night. not Friday. It's homecoming, you know. But the Tigers have handled it well, no doubt about it. Leading at 38 to 7 here with 8.27 left to go in the game. As we get ready for the Eagles to kick it back off here to the Tigers. And to kick it off is Gio Oriana. Kick is on the way. That's going to be end over end. Drops into D-man Floyd at about the 10-yard line. He is going to bring it out up midfield. Almost tripped up at about oh. the 30. Stays up. Breaks a couple of tackles. He goes out across midfield. He may take. Nope. He's going to be brought out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. So a massive kick return by D-man. Yeah, his second long kick return of the night. And that time he just ran out of real estate over there on the boundary on the far side of the field. But uh, he was able to do some serious damage and set the Tigers' offense up with great field position here. That was almost a 50-yard return for D-Man. Hey, yeah. I tell you what, you got, you got guys in purple. You got so many guys that can make game-changing plays. It's really an impressive lineup. Yeah, I think that's been one of the things that's really stood out about this team throughout the year is just how many different guys that they can go to on offense to make something happen. They're going to line up with shotgun formation here for Hendricks Jones. First and 10, there's the snap. Going to hand it off. I believe that was Twyman with the carry, and he is going to carry the pile about a year. hard run, uh, and the Coosa Eagles were right on top of him right away. So the fact that he got anything I thought was pretty remarkable. Yeah, absolutely. Hendricks Jones getting some opportunity here to lead this offense. Miles Twyman, again, um, Jace Hatcher. I want to call all these guys' names. So actually no gain on the play. Shotgun formation, going to have a four-wide set, two on each side. Tigers working right to left, leading at 38-7. to seven. There's the handoff. Nope, quarterback's going to keep it, cuts back to the near side, and he is going to be pulled down nearly by his jersey, stays up, breaks tackles, and is going to be shoved out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. So pick up about six or seven yards for him. And he earned every one of them. He sure did. Looked like he was going to be tackled three or four times before he was finally driven out of bounds. So a six-yard gain, gain is going to give the Tigers a third down and four up here. Flag on the play. It's a face mask against Kusa. So that'll move the chains. That's right. Parker and Lundy first down, and we are going to see our fourth quarterback as Henry Ledbetter comes out onto the field. And the Darlington pep band has been very spirited tonight. Uh, I just got a funny text. I'll tell you about it in a second. Shotgun formation that Henry Ledbetter is in at quarterback here for the Tigers. So fourth quarterback of the night, Ian, for the Tigers. 
So a gain of one on the play. And Ledbetter gets ready to line his guys up for a second down to nine with six minutes left on the clock and the clock ticking. Matt, I have no idea who to pick for the honeymoon bakery oh. icing on the cake player of the game, my friend. Well, we can have a little bit more of an extended post game tonight because this game's going to end so early. So we'll take a long break once we get done with this. And I just got a message from Clay, who's going to be a guest on uh, the scoreboard show. He needs a few minutes because he's going to stop by the crystal and get a few little sliders. So uh, there is Ledbetter on the carry. Going to run it off to the right side. Picks up two, three yards there. And nothing gets me ready for a radio broadcast like some crystal sliders before I sit down. That's I might fall asleep. Well, I was thinking about <laughs> dropping the equipment off at the station, but I think I'll lug it in my house. I don't want to go out there if that's what those guys are doing tonight with <laughs> the show. They're going to have to hold the fort down without me. I'm not getting involved in that. <laughs> Uh, Crystal's usually a desperation move for me. <laughs> we did it last <laughs> week. It was a desperation <laughs> move, too. Uh, uh, but it was so good, though. It hit That's the spot. Right. I can't lie. Led better ready to take the snap on third and nine. There it is. He's going to hand it off. They cut back to the near side with Twyman carrying the ball. Finds a seam. Cuts back inside. He's inside the 20, and the Tigers have another Parker and Lundy. First down, the are moving in they sure do miles twyman having himself a night pass break up he's got about six carries and that was his best one of the night by far a couple of nice moves from the freshman indeed so now the tigers have got the ball in the red zone with 420 left to go and again the fourth quarterback of the night in for the tigers henry ledbetter a freshman also a linebacker on defense He's going to line up with Miles Twyman in the backfield with him. Flank to his left, going to send four wide receivers on this package. There's a snap, going to turn, hands it off to Twyman. Stutter steps out the right side, and he's going to be brought down after a short game. They're breaking out Sweet Carolina again. Oh, no, while the they're on the down. field. That may have, may have. I'm going to go watch some college football this Saturday. I'm going to go down to Jacksonville State and watch my Gamecocks host the Kennesaw State Owls. That's become quite a rivalry, so I'm looking forward to heading down there on October 1st. That'll be fun. That'll mm -hmm. be a good one. Might be a little bit windy, but I think the rain is supposed to hold off. And if it doesn't, I'll leave. <laughs> I'm not sitting in the rain for much of anything these days. Second down and eight for the Tigers here. Twyman in the backfield with Ledbetter. Ledbetter is going to drop back, puts the ball in the air, and that is going to bounce toward the wide receiver incomplete. Ledbetter is a lefty. I didn't realize that. <laughs> and he was greeted rudely by East, who was tracking him down, so he didn't have much of a chance to get that pass off. That allergy's hitting Ian hard tonight. He's going to have to take the headset off for a couple of moments there. I'm sorry you're going through that, man. That's no, no fun. Something's in the air. There's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. Are you allergic to baby powder? That was in there a little bit ago. That might have been it. Yeah. You didn't get any mayonnaise on anything you ate today, did no, you? No, no, none of that, none of that nonsense. <laughs> and if you did, I'd be like, we're going straight to the emergency room after this is over. That's what I tell people anyway. There's the snap. Ledbetter's going to hand it off to Twyman. Runs around the right side, finds some room, and I think he's got it inside the 10 for a first and goal. Yeah, another Parker and Lundy first down for the Tigers. As we get close to the two-minute mark, you know, they'd like to put another score on the board, especially with these guys out on the field. Henry Herrick's going to check into the game here for the Tigers. Got a couple of men getting off the field quickly. One of them was Harrison Inman. Checking into the game now for the Tigers, Bryson Jones. And leaving the field is going to be Brecken Laliberte. I hope I said that right. I haven't called his name yet. Running off the field is going to be Charlie Jackson. So we've got some personnel change, and now the Tigers are ready to go here for first and goal from the nine-yard line. There's the snap. Back to Twyman they go. And he is going to run it up the middle, maybe find a yard or two. We'll see where the spot is. Setting up second and goal from the seven, it looks like. We're nearing the end of the ball game. We have one final, Matt. Uh, quit our, smiling so much. Uh, our mercy hung 57. Golly. On Chattooga. I, I, 
You, I wonder when the last time all Murchie scored 57 points in a game. I, game I, I, that was a long yeah, time ago. We'll need to find that out. Shotgun formation. Ledbetter ready to take the snap. One minute left to go. They're going to take a knee. And we're about to see the end of this football game, Ian. We sure are. They should uh, only have to snap it one more time. Yep. So the Darlington Tigers are going to win this one at home. 38-7 to to go up 6-0 and for the season. And more importantly, 2-0 and in Region 7A Division 1. And I'm hoping that by the end of the season, I can say that a little bit smoother. But for some reason, 7A Division I hasn't exactly rolled off the tongue for me just yet. But, and that is the end of the football game as the rest of the time will roll off the clock. But this has been a fun night here for the Darlington Tigers. It has been homecoming night. Had a big crowd on hand for tonight. And it's just been a, a beautiful night in terms of the weather and a lot of scoring there for the Tigers in the first half. They would lead it 38-0 to zero at halftime, and they end up winning the game 38-7. to seven. Uh, Kusa would not score until the 827 mark of the football game on a big pass from Dixon to Millsap. Uh, so it was all Tigers tonight. It was. Uh, this game was over at halftime uh, and uh, got to see some of the young guys get out there and get some valuable reps. And they will move on next week. It's a road trip to Chattooga. So uh, you got to think Darlington will be favored there. But what I'm sure this coaching staff is going to be driving home is you can't take a week off. You can't take a down off. Stay focused and let's go achieve our goals, which is a region championship. Yep, no doubt. And a goal that certainly could be in sight. There's going to be some tough tests along the way, but the Darlington Tigers are really, really putting together a fine season again at 6-0. and They win tonight 38-7 to over the Coosa Eagles. A great game for the Tigers. And we appreciate you listening and watching. And we're going to send it back to the studio for about a four-minute timeout. We're going to deliberate a little bit and determine who the winner of tonight's Honeymoon Bakery Icing on the Cake player of the game is going to be. And also start to set the the stage for you for tonight's episode of the Rome Orthopedic Center High School Football Scoreboard Show. But again, Darlington winners tonight, 38 to 7 over Kusa. We'll be back in four minutes. Darlington Football would like to thank the following sponsors for their support of this year's live stream. Business Water Solutions, Kusa Steel, Hardy Realty, Riverside Auto Group, and Atrium Health Floyd. Thank you for your support. This broadcast is a production of Northwest Georgia Media. Thank you for watching.